Jeremiah 29 let's be fast there are lots of scriptures we're going to look at because I want to establish a few things Jeremiah 29 verse 11 are we there okay want to read everyone is projected This is the part that I want us to focus on tonight. To give you a what? An expected end. A predictable end. Please listen to me. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. These thoughts that I think towards you, they are thoughts of good. The Bible says, finally, brethren, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are noble if there be any good report if there be any virtue and, and any praise he said think on these things and so god is saying i know the thoughts that i think towards you he said they are thoughts of good and not of evil this is god speaking and those thoughts are particularly designed to give you an expected end a predictable end not an unexpected end not an unpredictable end this is the word of the lord hallelujah he says i know the thoughts that i think towards you the thoughts that i think towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end hallelujah Point number one. The first point I want us to get tonight is that God's desire and plan for us is to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. God's desire and God's plan for us, according to scripture, is to live our lives here on earth to the fullest psalm 91 verse 16 please very quickly write down that point and then we'll look at a few scriptures god's desire and plan is for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest psalm 91 verse 16 please everyone read one to read One more time this is the bible this is the truth of god's word it says for with long life will i give him did he say will i give him that means there is a satisfaction that comes when a man enjoys longevity are you getting blessed it says for with long life will i satisfy him and in it i will show him my salvation number two exodus chapter 23 verse 26 please media you'll be really fast you'll help us there are lots of scriptures to look at and all of them are important we're establishing the first point tonight that it is god's desire and plan for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest exodus 23 verse 26 23 26 hallelujah everyone read the number of thy days i will fulfill the number of thy days there is an appointment with long life there is an appointment from the throne from eternity before you came and it says the number of your days i will fulfill it so that's the first point i want us to establish tonight and listen people i want you to realize that um, i'm a human being i understand that many of us are receiving this point with heavy hearts because you are comparing this truth of god's word versus the reality that for some of us have happened in recent times and for all of us as a house having to 
mourn the transition of our dear one but the bible says forever O lord thy word is settled a believer is not just one who has given his heart to the lord a believer is one who has submitted to the authority of god's word as the final say regardless of your experience this is what makes you a believer is you are not a believer just because you were born again you are a believer because you have come to a point where you have chosen willfully to allow the word of god take precedence and become the final authority over your life say amen do you believe what i'm teaching you you must realize that you are not just a believer because you got born again and you are going to heaven you are a believer like a wife who submits to her husband even if she does not like the way he's behaving even if she does not understand her covenant of marriage her covenant of being with him will force her to submit sometimes he may beat her he may be a foolish man but she has chosen as a submissive wife that i will submit to his authority and i will bear his son name that's what it means to be a believer to be a believer is not to love god when you can explain things to be a believer is that in the midst of your joy in the midst of your tears in the midst of your clarity in the midst of confusion regardless of what happens in your life the word of god stands irrefutable and unarguable in your life is god speaking to us are we growing as believers this is a very mature teaching tonight if you do not come to a point where you exalt the word of god above your life you will backslide and you will run away from god that's why we have many atheists today many of them were church children many of them were folks in baptist and presbyterian churches but their lives were surrounded by so much confusion and because they think that god has to be boxed to the limitation of their finite minds after a prolonged period of disappointment that disappointment builds a mentality and a stronghold that permits the operation of demon spirits and their conclusion is that god is a liar and their conclusion is that the bible is not true their conclusion is something is wrong there is a deceit somewhere but the bible says the lord is gracious and compassionate is slow to anger rich in love from everlasting to everlasting he says thou art god hallelujah it is god's desire for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest do you believe that point number two make sure you're writing point number two the bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time the bible did not hide it from us it didn't leave it as a secret it's clearly stated in the bible that it is possible that although this is the desire it is absolutely possible supported by scripture that a man can die before his time open bracket and write this especially if we do not diligently engage the keys that guarantee long life open bracket and write this especially if we do not diligently engage the keys that guarantee long life this is a very hard teaching for many of us tonight but it will test your love for God the Bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time Ecclesiastes 7 17 quickly Ecclesiastes 7 17 and Psalm 55 verse 23 we'll look at those Ecclesiastes 7 17 the Bible also teaches us under this point that the life of a man can be added and can be subtracted not only can the life be cut short the Bible shows us that someone's life can be added to and someone's life can be subtracted 717 Ecclesiastes hallelujah okay let's just let's just turn while they're trying to help her. okay 
hallelujah go ahead and read everyone one to read why should thou die before your time we are still going to revisit this verse it says be not over much wicked neither be thou foolish why should thou what die it's a question it's just the, the b part i want us to focus on why is a question that means it is a possibility that although these are the provisions the same way god designed for everyone to be prosperous the bible says that um how did he put it now he says the proceed of the earth is for the profit in of all but there are people today who love god and they are still poor is that true there are people today who love god and cannot afford to feed their children but it does not stop the fact that god is a loving god and he has shown a formula for prosperity why should thou die before your time so the bible shows us that it is a possibility that a man can die before his time psalm 55 verse 23 55 verse 23 are we there all right go ahead and read everyone those outside we apologize looks like they are not seeing the projection but just follow us very carefully one to read shall bring them down into the pit of destruction bloody and deceitful men shall not live out what half their days they will not even live up to half their days now forget that he's talking about wicked people i'm just showing you that there is a possibility that life can be added can be cut short can be multiplied can be divided can be subtracted this is the infallible word of god hallelujah so although god's desire and plan is for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest the bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time point number three this is a hard one now receive grace to receive it ready the bible re reveals that god is never behind us dying before our time write it down the bible reveals that god is never behind us dying before our time isaiah 65 verse 20 hallelujah you have won the victory
Bible reveals painfully but truly that God is never behind us dying before our time 65 verse 20 of Isaiah go ahead and read one to read nor an old man that had not what go ahead and read this is the prophet speaking the mind of God to the people of God he says there shall be no more infant of days nor an old man that had not filled his days for a child shall die a hundred years old brothers and sisters the Bible says but as many as believed him he gave them power to become as many as believed him he gave them power to become hallelujah one more scripture Ezekiel 18 verse 32 Ezekiel Shiva Kataparoto Suprati Go ahead and read. One to read. Stop. For what? One more time. One more time. This is God speaking. One more time. Read on. Do you believe this? Please listen, 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 listen. I'm a human being. Are you getting me? I understand the reality. I understand the pain. I, I understand the gravity. Are you getting me? Of, of, um, you will only need to be a leader to understand what it means to manage tragic issues in families. And this is consistent. I have been to mortuaries i have prayed for people we have lost loved ones in far and near and all kinds of things have happened but i choose to be a believer i choose to be a believer i lift my hands in worship as i sing Praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I sing. Praises to your name. It says, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth. Say it who? Say it, prophet Ezekiel saith the lord god wherefore as a result of the above turn yourselves and leave ye next point this is a very serious one and i want us to pay attention to it ready satan comma the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals kills and destroys john 10 10 please satan the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals kills and destroys write this before we look at the scripture in continuation he has strategies through which he achieves this mission Satan the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals kills and destroys he has strategies through which he achieves this mission continue writing topmost among the strategies are sicknesses suicides accidents write it down top 
foremost among these strategies are sicknesses you can write afflictions too suicide accidents these are his most common strategy of attempting to cut short lives these are his most common strategies 95 percent 95 percent of the transitions and the demise of human beings from the earth is as a result of sicknesses and infirmities suicides accidents of all sorts fire all kinds of things destruction john chapter 10 verse 10 the thief cometh not meaning you never see him in a place until there is need for this mission the thief cometh not meaning he has no business coming to a place except to do this to steal and to kill and to destroy but jesus the son of the living god said i am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly the thief satan there are many names that he's given in the bible he's given the serpent he's given the dragon he's given the thief he's called the accuser of the brethren he's called the adversary he's called the destroyer and satan has a strategy please let me have your attention now satan has a strategy there is a series by the grace of god on angels that we are going to be teaching subsequently and under that series of angels i'm going to be teaching us on the origin of angels and we are going to examine this man or this entity called satan praise the lord i want us to look very carefully in that series there are a few things about satan we cannot discuss it today but just a teaser do you know now many of you are going to be surprised but do you know that of all wicked spirits satan is not the most dangerous there are spirits today who are bound in everlasting chain they were deliberately not released because the bible says if they are released even the elect will not stand the question is at what point were they bound and what did they do hallelujah when you begin to read don't turn there the book of ezekiel 28 the bible begins to speak of an ancient king we don't have all that time to talk about the formation and the structure of angels look up many of us think and many of us have been taught that angels were created angels no no the word angel comes from the greek word angelio and it means a messenger let me tell you a few things look up please when ezekiel the prophet was shown this guy called lucifer the bible begins to talk with him in a similitude of a mortal man that was a king over nations and over kingdoms is that true is that, are, you, are you a believer you believe the bible is that true is raises up a lamentation against a king that ruled over a place called tyre and says thou which subdued nations talked about the making of satan and then he said how that he ruled nations and territories inhabitants in the earth present at that time watch this let me just give you a quick analogy everyone look up this is an academic environment so let me attempt to communicate a few things i think it's important we get this look look at this imagine for instance that there was a student when our daddy prof was a student let's assume right that there was a notorious student at that point 
during the time of our daddy when he was in school are you getting that point and that notorious criminal had access to the senate please follow me a notorious criminal are you getting what i'm saying and because of that something happened at that time watch this that notorious criminal was banished as a student because of a rebellion that he wanted to have against the university and the vice chancellor are you getting me now because probably he was given the privilege of being an sug president and so he had some level of dominance over the students are you following what i'm saying now on the strength of that he led a rebellion as at the time he did that daddy was a student are you getting what i'm saying now he is long graduated but that notorious capon is still lingering around abu are you getting what i'm saying now after so many decades a new set comes into that same abu are you getting my point and then you hear that people there is one notorious criminal that has been here this guy has been here for a long time are you getting what i'm saying he's an illegal occupant he's not a student but he has refused to leave that territory watch out for him he has an advantage of experience because he has watched many sets of students u61 u62 u60 whatever till now you are you or something and they are giving you an advice that you are not the first occupant of abu are you hearing what i'm saying that abu that's why when you measure it you find out that you are young but they tell you abu is 50 years whereas you are just four years are, are you getting my analogy is it making sense to you when he was the student he was not the most notorious student he was just the one that led a rebellion and it became history there are other notorious students cultists that were driven away are you getting what i'm saying but it so happens that this very notorious student is determined to frustrate the council and the agenda of the university now watch this let me tell you something i don't know if this is the right platform to begin to teach us but we'll have that series by the grace of god did you know that angels were once mortal beings are you getting what i'm saying now there was a dispensation that they reigned upon the earth their dispensation ended and the ones who are with christ have been sent as messengers to help our dispensation just like imagine that jesus comes now i hope you know when jesus comes our dispensation is ended but the program of god still proceeds we do not yet know for sure what are the other agendas but we know the bible tells us there is a there is an age to come and there is a power that is left for that age to come and by reason of alignment we can taste of that power what age we do not know the word eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations so i guarantee you we will be the last of mankind as we know in this level of civilization but not the last as far as creation as far as as advancement as far as habitation and the humanoid species as we know who knows maybe in another dispensation we will be sent to other planets and galaxies according to the wisdom of god if allowed and we will be able to help the inhabitants to live out the purposes of god in that dispensation they will call us angels i will sing of the wonders of your word i will sing out for joy i will sing of the wonders of your word and i will forever sing your praise now watch this when we get to heaven there will not the bible does not record the concept of marriage does not exist again in heaven is that true so if 
in the earth in my earth life for instance this was my wife these were our children when we get to heaven we all become brothers and sisters are you getting what i'm saying we all become brothers and sisters i can appear in another dispensation to help the inhabitants and they can look at me and say wow who is this strange being but they do not know that there was a dispensation that you walk with human life it is this aberration that was that was cornered that brought what people call the mystery of reincarnation this is what some of the fallen angels taught people and taught our forefathers and said forget the people you are seeing now they have been before listen the dispensation before our own there was a tremendous degree of power that was given to them there was nothing called invisible and visible that concept did not exist are you getting my point the dispensations before us you could access the heavens and access the earth now it so happened that our dispensation disobeyed right from the beginning so adam did not stay long for us to see the possibilities that were put in our dispensation we never had the opportunity to see what we could do for instance there was no dispensation that recorded reproduction they recorded rulership and they recorded who knows if adam did not fall and eve would have had the opportunity because he still would have given birth you understand he would have given birth in his perfected state we would have seen the son of adam a womb that has not been corrupted by the fallen nature that's why in all of the dispensations is only our dispensation that brought jesus the son of the living god to come and die please let's continue that's for another time i'm just trying to show you that the one you call satan lucifer he was once a king in a dispensation hmm. the king of tyre that ruled upon nations that's the reason why those spirits still walk upon kings today and try to make them build what used to be are you getting me now those spirits together with satan were the brains behind the building of the tower of babel they were attempting to bring back a dispensation to create a rebellion that once was that was why solomon in his wisdom said there is nothing on earth that is happening the first time you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah geography today geography they have found castles thousands of meters under the earth they have found ancient castles did you know that there was a dispensation where where we are standing now was water not land the same way that place where is the mount of ararat where the the ark of noah rested where is it in the earth today we know everest to be the highest where is mount ararat where are the golds where is the temple of solomon that was built with pure gold you mean everything disappeared that we cannot even find dust of gold let me tell you most of them are still intact they are buried in the sea because the judgment that led the word darkness covering the earth is the hebrew word tohu wa bohu is the word that connotes darkness and confusion right in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that beginning we do not know but then we know that something happened and then the earth was dark and void formless it was the judgment are you getting me the water had to be judged and then it also had to cool the earth that was why there was a division two-thirds of the earth is covered with water and when you read revelations when one of the trumpets is blown one of the things that will be happened will happen to the earth 
is that there will be certain kinds of plagues and judgments i'm saying all of this to let you know that satan has a history the strength of satan is not his might because he's not the strongest of spirits the strength of satan is an advantage of a spiritual strategy backed up by an ancient wisdom of deceit are we blessed very quickly keys to long life the first thing i want you to know about the keys to long life is you do not choose one and leave the rest they all complement themselves you don't choose one key and then allow the rest to go no there are keys there are keys number one the first key to long life that the bible reveals is speaking choosing releasing words of life psalm 34 verse 12 to 14 and then we'll look at proverbs 18 verse 21 psalms 34 12 to 14 and then proverbs 18 verse 1 the first key to long life is to speak it the first key to long life is to choose it the first key to long life is to release it hallelujah ready look up let's read psalm 34 verse 12 one to read what man is he that desireth what life and loveth what many days that he may see good read on keep what there is a relationship stop between your tongue its communication and your life the bible says who is he that desire long life it says keep your tongue from evil and your lips from what speaking guile 14 depart from evil and do good seek peace and pursue it the emphasis is 12 and 13 who is he koinonia that desires long life i don't die you oh. the bible says who is he that desires long life don't just laugh about what i'm saying because whether you think you are joking or not the bible says and let it not be said before an angel i made a mistake who is he that wants to activate longevity it says keep the please go to verse 13 13 13, 13. it says keep thy tongue from what and your lips keep your tongue i know many of you have said kai people are begged they are exaggerating why do you want to speak please be real you be real in the earth way you will die like a chicken your reality must be the word it says i am the way i am reality i am absolute reality hallelujah proverbs 18 21 can we read proverbs 18 verse 21 one to read what will they eat the fruit of what no 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 it's in your bible it says they that love it shall do what death and life this is solomon a man who received wisdom from god he's teaching us from the abundance of the mysteries that he was granted access to and he said in my exploration of spiritual mysteries i found something death and life are left in the power of the tongue they that love it shall eat the fruit there hallelujah are you blessed the bible says i set before you this day blessing and cursing is that true death and life here's my suggestion i can't force you but this is my suggestion choose life that you may live not wish it choose life koinonia 
choose life that you may live are you still a believer choose life that you may live choose life i set before you blessing and cursing i set before you death and life but this is my advice for you choose life i speak life oh my brother I speak life Head and not a tail You will prevail I speak life Don't give up the fight For your life Hallelujah Everybody say after me I choose life outside can you shout it i choose life those standing at the back the back there can you say i choose life don't let the devil tell you i hope you know what you're saying say it i choose life he said let the redeemed of the lord say so let the redeemed of the lord say so conquer fear i choose life when you speak you release it this is a voice activated planet nothing happens until sound is released i choose life send it to the atmosphere i choose life send it ahead of your tomorrow i choose life the will of man cannot be compromised hallelujah listen jesus said behold i jesus the king of kings the creator of the ends of the earth I stand at the door of your heart and I keep knocking I cannot enter until your will permits me as mighty as Jesus is he respects the will of man how much more Satan Jesus the son of the living God the resurrected Christ the eternal one stands at the door of a man's heart and keeps knocking for 60 years if that man refuses he goes to hell but he was knocking so what do you think makes you think that satan just steps into your heart is called deception this is the foundation of witchcraft it paints a picture that is not real it makes you to buy into it and you authorize him to have wreck havoc in your life say it again i choose life say it again i choose life Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Key number two. Scaprando skelebrendi shalabalalaba. Can you pray in tongues for one minute? And say, Lord, let this revelation just sink into me. If the devil brings the memories of your past loved ones tell him satan the lord rebuke you i know they are in heaven but right now i'm making my choice and my decision don't let the devil just bring any memory to put guilt and say did they speak like that say satan you are a liar the lord rebuke you i choose life hallelujah are you blessed tonight right very quickly everybody key number two to longevity the fear of the lord the fear of the lord biblical key number two to longevity under the word fear write reverence reverence the fear open bracket reverence of the lord hmm. proverbs chapter 10 verse 27 proverbs 10 27 proverbs 10 27 everyone read one to read The fear of the Lord, Yirat Adonai, reverence for God, respect for Him, honor for Him, 
and his ways and what he represents prolongs days but the years of the wicked shall be shortened the bible says the fear of the lord there are two indexes given in the bible to measure the fear of the lord in a man's life number one obedience to his commands and number two service in the house of god obedience and service are two keys that demonstrate whether or not you fear the lord obedience obedience oh i love him i obey him proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 to 11. i just want to praise you i lift my hands to say i love you you are everything to me and i exalt your heart. the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding verse 11 for by me days shall be what and the years of thy life shall be increased and so the Lord spoke to Isaiah he said go and tell Hezekiah you will not recover from that sickness you will die and Ezekiah turned his face to the wall and said oh Lord remember how I have walked diligently before you and the Lord sent Isaiah again he said uh -uh -uh -uh. I remember my faithfulness and he went back and said the Lord said I have added for by me Joshua Selman's days shall be multiplied and the years of his life shall be increased obedience and service when we talk to people about obeying the principles of God many people think that I can live my life the way I want longevity brothers and sisters hear me don't let westernization deceive you longevity is tied to your fear of the Lord service there are so many people seated here inside and outside you're not serving in any unit you're not contributing in any way to the advancement of the kingdom i shall not die but live to declare the works of the lord amen that's a scripture there you will live to declare you will live to promote you will live to frontier his kingdom let me tell you this my passion under the apostolic ministry is not just to produce miracles in people's lives is to create a sense my passion is to institutionalize god consciousness in people to make it an institution that everything in your life brothers and sisters is secondary to the pursuit of his agenda i don't care whether you have discovered your assignment or not i can tell you an assignment start serving diligently in the house of god don't you let people fool you to think those who serve in the house of god are just weak people who are desperate for husband say kai you self eh? the way you are behaving don't let anyone cheat you there are people who live their lives as though you control your life by yourself hallelujah when five minutes without your breath you are gone it doesn't matter what your agenda is it's over the greatest part of a man's life is that part that is invested in serving God that's how you cheat death that's how you cheat the grave that's how you cheat death you don't cheat death by being afraid of it you cheat death by serving god victorious in life 
and victorious in death paul says for for me to live is christ and if i die it is still gain there is no loss hallelujah as you're sitting here the lord is speaking to you you are living your life as young as you are you think you are too busy there are many of you outside as you are looking at my face the lord jesus is speaking to you tonight i'm saying you are the one i'm sending this man of god to talk to when will you begin to serve god with the active years of your life say i'm not a man of god i'm a pilot so what that my life be offered oh god on the altar of sacrifice that i will serve you i told god this is all i do with my life i don't have plan b when i wake up in the morning your kingdom come oh god that's all i do are you getting blessed service is one of your greatest respect that you can do for god i'll serve i'll serve i'll serve you lord forever i'll serve i'll serve i'll serve you lord forever i'll do my best i'll do my best with all my life i'll do my best for you i'll do my best i'll do my best I'll do my best for you. Sing it one more time from your heart. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord. It's only a fool that will live his life hustling. I must make it as though you hold the breath of your nostrils in your hands you go to churches and see how many people warm the bench every week and there is no sense of conviction in them to serve God that there's no service for the kingdom it's not part of their lives they come and they warm the bench and smile around and you tell them are you serving any believer that is not serving in a church not serving in a group your seed is not going for the advancement of the kingdom you don't deserve to leave he says i shall not die but leave but leave there is a way a man's life can frontier the kingdom god will kill a nation to preserve that man I travel all the time don't you think I don't know what I'm saying tomorrow we are on our way again to be there all the time I've seen all varieties of accidents I've seen all kinds of things I've seen all kinds of seeming threatening situations we have met armed robbers we were going to um when we were going to a bomber shop our flight was cancelled we had to charter a car to take us by road we left about 4 30 in the morning just coming out of abuja abaji going towards just entering the route to go towards Kogi, and we saw somebody reversing they were armed robbers brothers and sisters this gentleman speaking to you i'm not a fool are you getting what i'm saying i'm educated but i want to tell you something the fear of the lord can prolong the days of a man that you spend your life serving God during the days of our fathers the popular song is Lord here am I send me right now we are saying Lord here am I give me I have come I finally arrived to collect see let me tell you don't just laugh if you keep that mentality and it becomes the circumference of your christian experience you will be unfruitful in the kingdom i want to stand before my maker mm. I, I, I can only imagine what it would be like 
Ah, what's the song? You know the song I'm trying to sing, right? Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine That on that day when I stand before Him When we are finally done and we have conquered the earth depopulated the kingdom of hell and brought, turned the hearts of many to righteousness that through faith after we have subdued kingdoms and wrought righteousness we will stand upon the mountain and salute creation and say lord i am ready and you appear before him to be absent in the body the apostle says is to be present with the lord and he looks at you and says well done you tried and they take on that crown and you see all the Matthias saying we watched you all the while while you were in that crusade we watched you while you refused to give up as you were casting out those devils the family in heaven was watching for some of us while you were roaming around gossiping and all that was your passion was oh god husband time is going god said we, we were watching you too i am alive that was changed Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. We were in your life a few weeks ago. And when we went there, the organizer of the, the campus crusade, when he met me, I saw the way he was saluting me. And I said, I was wondering, what was this for? And he called me and he said, Sir about three years or thereabout when you came into this campus i was just a fresh student when i came in and when you preached i got born again i got filled with the holy spirit and today i'm still standing and doing many things every time people call and say koinonia messages are changing people i say lord thank you i have no business being known they don't need to know me that i may decrease that my face cannot heal anybody my picture cannot bless anybody there is one mightier than i he's the one i live and i spend my entire life serving please i speak to you as a servant of god tonight think about your life think seriously about your life and the way you are ignoring the things of god as though there is something better i'm not saying be a pastor be an addict enough when was the last time your money entered the advancement of the gospel how many souls can stand before god and say it was your giving that brought the men of god to this place how many of you can say it was your prayer you were interceding for every man of god not snoring around and complaining how many of you have sacrificed your night time for the sake of the kingdom how many of you have sacrificed your food for the kingdom the fear of the Lord let me tell you vanity upon vanity all is vanity I have stood before kings I have stood before millionaires I know what honor sounds I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold impossible I wouldn't trade you for riches untold you are, you are my There is nothing in this life that will attract me enough to stop what I'm doing. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. The psalmist said, better is one day. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I'm so desperate to serve you. Although I'm a king, I choose to be an usher, a sanctuary keeper, than a celebrity somewhere. These were men who understood God. They understood the ways. There are some of you here, you think you are too big to join the protocol. You are too big to do this. You see all the people sacrificing and you think they are fools. Unfortunately, most preachers have preached service, not as a proof of love for God, but as a way to get things from God. It is true that if they obey and serve Him, there are benefits. But brothers and sisters, hear me. Beyond getting things, it is a proof of love. 
so if your work is to bring this water you bring it with all sense of honor not just like you are worshiping a man oh it's a privilege to serve in the house of god it's a privilege if you are to clean the chairs you are cleaning the chairs and say lord it's a it's a privilege it's a privilege you can do without me you have chosen to do with me you are supposed to bake the cake you are seated and you know you have grace you say no i need to join the welfare department i must spend my life i, I need to contribute you are excellent in graphic oh the media needs me service 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 whether you are in zaria or not find a church find a group find a fellowship find a, a congregation of believers many of us are looking for geo and mama that's the only condition you have given god to serve him lord i will serve you if i will be the mama of the ministry i will serve you if you give me the name of my parish the name of your parish is nothing let it be your passion hallelujah are we getting blessed i'm preaching from the depth and the core of my spirit because i don't want you to waste your time please get back into the mystery of kingdom service get back you spend your time serving a guy because you love him you go to his house you wash his clothes you cook you iron and he says is it not too much you say this is the least i can do for you is it to express my love i'm i'm, I'm not embarrassed call me a fool it's true eh? if loving you is a crime let me be a criminal look at what you are saying look at what you are saying shame on any believer who is saying that i'm telling you i say it again shame on any believer that because of mundane things you can so serve a man and your passion cannot go for God. hallelujah proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 skapaka prondo sopro silia paharato sufratia proverbs chapter 3 my son forget not my law but let thy heart keep my commandments verse 2 for length of days obedience length of days and long life together with peace shall they add to thee commandment he that loveth me is he that keeps my commands john 14 21 he that keepeth my commands is he that loveth me and i will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him the commands of god his commandments are not burdensome brothers and sisters let's hurry up key number three to long life engaging the mystery of the blood key number three let's hurry up engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding there are three ways that the mystery of the blood was used in scripture to bring preservation and deliverance number one in the book of exodus chapter 12 it was used to anoint the doorposts and the lintels so that the angel of death would not come and destroy the people hallelujah number two jesus revealed it to us in the communion the communion in the new testament he began to teach us the mystery of the communion and then number three the mystery of what the bible calls blood sprinkling that the priest would take a portion and a sample of the blood and sprinkle upon the people and it will mark them first corinthians chapter 11 from verse 24 to 30 we may not have time to read all but let's see how far we can go help us media first corinthians 11 verse 24 to 30 paul is teaching the church in corinth the mystery of the blood with respect to communion 
and when he had given thanks he break it and said take it this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me next verse it says after the same manner he took the cup here and there 25 26 for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye show the lord's death till he comes 27 wherefore whosoever now listen shall eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily open your eyes i want to show you a mystery unworthily it says this sacrament there are two sacraments that jesus left to the church one is the sacrament of the communion the second is the sacrament of baptism water baptism two of them are still valid they are important today it says whosoever shall take up the cup of the lord unworthily shall be guilty of what the body and the blood of the lord here comes the mystery 28 but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup 29 for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily does what he can eat and drink unto damnation because he did not discern that the body and bread of jesus christ relieves life and because he's, he's eating it unworthily he will get the opposite of it next verse 30 read please one two read stop for what cause for the cause of partaking in the communion without discernment for this cause how many people how many how many people do you know have died today that they told you it was a communion that killed them have you ever had any death and they told you that ah this death it was communion that killed the man is it in your bible for this cause did he say few many many are weak for this cause the cause of not discerning the lord's body the cause of not respecting it for this cause of not giving it the honor it says many are weak you believe the bible right many are what sick and many sleep wow for this cause trivializing the body of christ not discerning the power it can release not discerning that this represents the body of jesus beaten battered by whose stripes we are healed it says for this cause that means when you take it with understanding and you take it worthily for that cause you will be strong you will be healthy and you will live you will be strong you will be healthy and you will live exodus chapter 12 from verse 7 to 8 the mystery of the blood and then 12 to 13 we're not going here we don't have the time we have to move on to other things i'm just giving you references exodus chapter 12 7 to 8 and then 12 to 13 and also verse 23 these are all scriptures that show how the blood upon the lintel and the doorpost when the angel of death the bible calls it the destroyer that when the destroyer comes and he sees that blood upon your lintel it will leave and trouble you not hallelujah praise the lord key number four honor to parents key number four let's be fast please honor to parents open bracket both physical and spiritual ephesians chapter 6 from verse 2 to 3 honor to parents both physical and spiritual are mystery keys to long life one to read is projected one to read honor thy father and thy mother which is the first commandment with a promise verse 3 was the blessing that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long where it told you you will live long and it told you the location where you will live long for honoring parents how many of us have dishonored our parents yes they are foolish yes they've acted stupidly yes they may have behaved in a way but do you honor them 
some of us beat up our parents some of us beat up daddy and mommy we think i'm a big boy i'm a big girl i'm now married i have children i'm driving a jeep let no level of madness ever get into you that you will insult your father curse your father or your mother let me show you this proverbs 2020 a grave consequence follow those who can curse and dishonor their fathers read it please one to read his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness whosoever can dare to curse the father and the mother that brought him to the earth now get this i'm not saying that they lead you to partition so as for as long as what they are doing is not leading you to death and leading you outside of salvation no matter what it is look at me david twice had the opportunity to kill saul is that true are you bible students david had the opportunity to kill saul he caught his rope and went away with it he said i will not be the one to kill god's anointed how many times have people run their mouths talking about men of god you sit down where you are and you are just lambasting men of god just talking and smiling the bible says honor your father and your mother whether spiritual or physical he said they that rule well among you deserve double honor honor them that rule well when they are proven a life of integrity not human worship not fear but a sense of honor and respect i honor my parents in life and in death hallelujah some of you have elderly people come around you can see an elderly person standing in a meeting in your house and you just cross your leg and you are just balancing and smiling and say you came late please i don't want anything to inconvenience me you are there shaking your wevon up and down instead of you to stand up and say mama please you can sit down and she say no 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 my daughter insist insist say mama sit down it's not about being a virtuous woman it's about life and death life and death it's in your bible i'm not the one saying it it's in your bible say i choose to honor my father and my mother how many of you pray for your men of god how many of you pray for ministers you stand there criticizing and shouting when you hear that a minister has a scandal instead of you to get to the place of prayer you stand there saying i always knew i always suspected the way i've been looking at that man you see that continue the bible says he that cursed his father and his mother his lamb his life will be taken away to obscure darkness how many have died as a result of this honor when a father fights his son he loses his honor when a son fights his father spiritual or physical he loses his life that's why many people sadly to say many people who just break out foolishly because they want to start their churches or ministries break out and jeopardize the life of the jew thinking god called them notice very few of them ever last because he that dishonored his father his lamb will be taken are we learning number what now number five walking in wisdom the fifth key to long life walking in wisdom proverbs chapter 3 verse 13 to 3 verse 13 to 16 those outside if you are still with us say amen god bless you all right proverbs 3 verse 13 to 16 walking in wisdom walking in wisdom foolishness can take a man's life foolishness can cut short a man's life walking in wisdom hallelujah the bible says happy is the man that what finds wisdom that means you have to look for it and the man that get it understanding 14 for the merchandise of it are better than silver and the gain thereof than fine gold 15 she is more precious than rubies and all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared with her 16 length of days are in her right hand and in her left hand 
riches and honor if you embrace wisdom it will also open you up to long life look at me how many people do you know who cannot drive hello they cannot drive and then they go and carry a truck and kick it because they are trying to impress their colleagues are you seeing how foolishness costs the life of people and then they go to the road they have given the spirit of death unrestrained access how many people drive their cars foil is leaking down are you getting what i'm saying foil is leaking and they don't care there are people who who transfer is a gallon that is in their car or their bus they connect it directly to the carburetor and from the bus, from the foil is feeding the vehicle and they are there running they are smiling how many people you look at the tire of the car and you are already seeing the metal the tire is so it is the, the man is driving and holding the steering this way for the car to be straight that's the degree to which the car is disaligned and yet he plans to travel to lagos the bible says wisdom is profitable to direct are we blessed a man takes beer alcohol and tells you can i give you a ride you say really you get into the car wisdom you have trusted your life to a foolish man are we getting blessed please how many things do people do go to many homes now and see the risky connections that they do in their homes directly under your bed is one wire that has been there two years naked wire how many people dry their clothes on naked wires or at least part of it is beginning to cut life wire they dry their clothes and smile they have been doing it i i know how to do it no 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 i'm showing you how people partner with the spirit of death to cut short their lives you plug iron and you just reduce it and then you are watching film and you are enraptured in the movie there are many of us the way you own your car there is something only you know how to touch you touch the wires and then something down you just touch it and it sparks cas, cas, and then the thing starts you've been doing it for many years preserved by mercy you think you are wise god is speaking to you tonight how many people drive cars with the exhaust on the ground sparking you see it sparking and there is foil directly under yet we went to school is God teaching us wisdom there are people where you keep the room where people sleep is also where you keep foil you buy one jerry can of foil and keep it close there are babies there there are all kinds of things people are inhaling it there are others you never eat well I'm showing you how people partner with Satan to destroy their lives you never eat well there's no difference from the day God you were in poverty and now that God is even helping you there is no difference look at mechanics look at what they eat same thing one lady comes with 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 a lele or something and serves them that's what they eat every day every night they take tea in the night see that kind of unhealthy that's why the life expectancy level of africa is about is it 30 or 40. scientifically proven we're not talking of demons here we're just talking of carelessness say carelessness yes yes people do all kinds of things risky things and we think there is no problem to it very risky things is only god that can tell the kind of risks people take every day every day there's food on fire you made yam the water is boiling you want to use your hand to carry it out can't you look for spoon if the spoon is missing can't you be patient why must you cut you you came complete why must you go back with one hand yes you will make heaven but is that a rich life is that a rich life why will you cut short your life because of carelessness it's god speaking to us number six 
the sixth key to longevity is to take authority over the spirit of death infirmity and destruction we're getting deeper now we're getting to the area where we're going to pray Luke 10 verse 19 death is a spirit brothers and sisters i've taught you this behold see don't be ignorant i give you power to tread upon serpents upon scorpions and over how many how many all the powers of the enemy he says and nothing shall by any means harm you i have given you if you take advantage of it and you use it appropriately he said with wise counsel make war with wise counsel make war i have given it to you death is a spirit infirmity is a spirit destruction is a spirit the spirit does not just work by default when the spirit of death is in an environment what happens is it waits and finds people that partner with its activity this is the standard operation there are a few exemptions however but the standard way the spirit of death the spirit of death is like a lion waiting for a prey are you getting what I'm saying now? Let's take 10 minutes and discuss something that will be very serious under this topic. A subtopic under point six, the reality of witchcraft. Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12. May I remind you ladies and gentlemen, if you are yet to believe that witchcraft is real, are you hearing what i'm saying if anyone has deceived you into the illusion that you are living in a world where there is no witchcraft i just gave you a teaser with wicked spirits please listen to what i'm saying because it's very important the reality of witchcraft deuteronomy 18 from verse 10 to 12 let's hurry up let's just write the scriptures media copy them down and then you give it to us nahum chapter 3 verse 4 Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 17 to 23 Proverbs 1 11 and then Psalms 10 verse 8 there are many more but we'll just stop here give us Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12 let's hurry up everyone read want to read there shall be not found among you anyone that make his son or his daughter to do what pass through fire or that uses divination or an observer of times an enchanter or a witch next verse or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer next verse for all that do these things are an abomination to the lord and because of these abominations the lord thy god doth drive them out before thee god himself identifies that there is a dark side to our world there are enchanters there are stargazers there are men that manipulate the constellation against the destinies of men the church has been so ignorant or we have exaggerated the reality and the existence of satan nahum chapter 3 verse 4 just look up so that um since it's projected one to read because of the multitude of the wardoms of the well-favored harlot the what mistress of witchcraft that sell what look at what she sells she can see look at her goods the way you sell pure water the mistress of witchcraft and say you can come and meet me and i will give you africa i can give you this village i can sell that soul to you it's in your bible it says she sells what nations through her wardom her fraternity with human beings that means human agents come to meet her i want access to a territory and what does she sell again families is that in your bible is that in your bible that there are witchcraft activities that sell families 
Rando zetele kratu shalabakaya. Bronco suto palaba. Let's look at two scriptures quickly. Ezekiel 13, 17 to 23 is a long reading. Let's rush. Are you still with me? All right, let's hurry up to 23. Likewise, son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy thou against them. Lord God, woe to the women that sow pillows to all armholes and make what? Handkerchiefs. What version is this? Okay, it's okay. Upon the head of every stature. Hey, let me show you what the Bible is saying. Where's my handkerchief? They sew pillows and they carry handkerchiefs and drop it on the head of statues to do what? To do what? To hunt souls as a way of invoking the spirits of men. They take on a handkerchief, put it on a statue and call your name. It's in your Bible. They have not taught you because many preachers have lied to you. That is a nice word for as long as you just say, God, I'm here and I love you. Everything is all right. Welcome to planet Earth that has strangers that are here before our arrival. They hunt souls. He said, Will ye hunt the souls of my people? They are hunting, they are everywhere. Let me tell you, especially for Africa. Please don't pretend like you are coming from the Caribbean. You were born an African, you belong to an African family. And you must be ready to confront our children by the grace of God will not need to go through this but for now we must pay that price are you there will you save the souls alive that come unto you next verse let's look at it quickly and will ye people oh and will ye what me among the people for handful of barley and for pieces of bread to slay what read that part to slay the souls that should not die to slay souls that should not die and to do what to save the souls that are alive the mystery of spiritual exchange that a man will see that his time is here because the wicked shall be cut short and he will say in my place i invoke this and i donate this person die in my stead it was an ancient practice that king used when they were about to kill them they killed their children and an indignation rose and the war ended it's still being practiced today men who give others for their lives i prophesy to you any man that invokes your name on any altar as surely as the lord god of israel lives they will carry their dead body from that altar i say it again in the name of the lord jesus that any charm any altar that invokes your name to die the death of another may my god visit them with judgment next next verse lord god behold i am against your pillows wherewith ye were there to hunt the souls to make them fly watch this look at the mystery of witchcraft and i will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly when verse what now two verses left your handkerchiefs i will also tear your instruments of divination those those mediums that you use in covens that you flip and call the names of people and somebody is walking peacefully on the street all of a sudden somebody comes with a knife and kills him and they say he just died no sir he did not just die an invocation happening in the realm of the spirit and deliver my people out of your hand and they shall be no more in your hand to be haunted say amen, amen. and they shall know that i am the lord your god let's read 22 because i can't read all those ones whom i have not made sad listen and strengthen the hands of the wicked that you should not return from his wicked ways by promising him life look at this guys the summary is that this is a transaction of life and death happening in the underworld whereas there are human beings moving you are minding your business they are discussing business with your life 
I prophesy to you again oh Lord God of Israel I speak that anyone under the sound of my voice that is being manipulated by stargazers that is being manipulated by necromancers they who manipulate the constellations I declare in the name of Jesus Christ may those ovens catch fire may those ovens tonight catch fire may those covens catch fire proverbs 1 verse 11 proverbs 1 verse 11 Shabarato totobaya. watch this if they say come with us let us lie and wait for what let us do what let us wait for blood let us lock privately for the innocent without cause meaning they did not do anything but we desire their blood so we are waiting let's wait for the day that they want to take a step let's wait for when the woman takes in and then we will visit ah. the whole world lieth in wickedness if you are yet to be aware be aware this night write the following scriptures down we may not have time to read them but this is the lot of the wicked this is what god will do with wicked people okay let's look at one of them micah chapter 5 verse 12 but one other scripture you will write this is the lot of witchcraft psalms 109 verse 17 to 18 just write that we won't read it let's read micah chapter 5 verse 12 when the lord opened my eyes to this scripture i was amazed one to read and shout amen after you read it one to read he said i will cut off witchcraft i will cut it off because if i don't cut it off they will cut short your life so i will cut it off is god helping us but i mean number seven quickly there are eight points i'm giving you seven activating the ministry of angels the seventh key to long life activating the ministry of angels hebrews 1 14 activating the ministry of angels angels are real they are real i have seen them i see them all the time angels are very very real are they not all ministering spirits meaning you cannot see them in the physical except god opens your eyes or he gives them a, a material body to appear before you sent forth to do what to minister to those who shall be the heirs of salvation are you an heir of salvation are you a partaker of salvation there are angels allocated to you but they never act until you activate their ministry they never act until you activate their ministry until you activate their ministry and you activate their ministry in the place of prayer you activate their ministry through words you release angels you release angels you activate their ministry angels are real and they help believers we we'll look at a few scriptures they protect they preserve and they contend with wicked spirits part of the assignment of angels with respect to spiritual warfare and preservation of the saints because god knows that alone we cannot make it there is an advantage that wicked spirits have they have advantage of the understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom and so he gave us angels joshua chapter 5 verse 13 to 14 don't turn there just write it joshua 5 verse 13 to 14 joshua has an, an encounter with an angel project for us project for us second kings 19 verse 35 second kings 19 verse 35 while she's doing that in the book of daniel chapter 10 when you read from verse 13 the bible says that archangel michael contended with the prince of persia he was trying to stop him from coming down to destroy daniel but daniel was activating the ministry of that angel in the place of prayer when we pray 
we activate angels when we speak we activate angels second kings you can see the angels standing to fight warfare for men read and it came to pass that night that the angel of the lord went out and smote in the camp of the assyrians a hundred four score and five thousand and when they rose up early in the morning behold they were all dead corpses one angel imagine how powerful they are about 185,000 people killed by one angel in one night when you activate them Jude chapter 1 verse 9 the Bible tells us that when Satan came to carry the body of Moses Satan wanted to come and carry the body of Moses and Michael the archangel again he came to contend with Satan so angels fight to preserve our bodies Marato they fight to preserve our lives preserve our bodies preserve our destinies Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 read verse 11 one to read for he shall give what his angels charge over thee hallelujah to keep thee in all thy ways verse 12 and they shall bear thee up on their hands lest thou dash thy foot against the stone hallelujah the key to activating them is found in psalms 103 verse 20 psalm 103 verse 20 please begin to prepare the oil there's there's an anointing service that will happen here shortly very quickly quickly bring the oil for me please don't open it yet just bring it these are the instructions that the lord gave me psalms 103 verse 20 go ahead and read one to read bless the lord ye his angels that excel in strength that do what his commandment how do they walk hearkening they walk at the instance of his word they walk at the instance of his word as you pray and declare the word you activate them you activate them you activate them as you speak god's word the moment they hearken to the word they start walking until a word is spoken the angels are not activated the moment they hearken to the word they start moving hallelujah these are eight keys that the lord revealed to me in my place of retreat and he said teach my people these are the keys to long life these are the keys to long life you can live long and the lord gave me an instruction he said according to the mystery of the blood and the mystery of the oil anoint my people i don't do foolish things give me the oil i'm not one of those men of god that just does things impulsively and the lord gave me an instruction he said when i was done with that retreat i should come back and based on two scriptures the lord gave me isaiah 10 27 something will happen in this place tonight Mande brando su sopratia. She bros satalan de cras no brash tilaba. She bros setetete paladabaya. And it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken away from your shoulder. It shall come to pass that those spells of enchanters and stargazers and they that hunt your soul unto death it shall come to pass that by a mystery as revealed of the lord of sabaoth the avenger of men that it shall come to pass that at the instance of his word that it shall be taken from off your shoulder and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing because of the anointing there are charms that must be broken because of the anointing there are people sentenced to death sentenced to accidents sentenced to untimely death by the mystery by the mystery of the oil 
Manda kata paroto supaya. The second scripture. Exodus chapter 12, please. Please, everyone turn there. I sense the anointing of the spirit very strongly right now. Please turn there. This is the instruction that the Lord gave me. Make sure everyone is participating right now. No matter how far, those following us online, they can get oil if, if they have access to it. Verse 7, please. Verse 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat. It says they shall take the blood and put it on the lintel. Go to verse 12 for i will pass through the land of egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of egypt i will execute vengeance i am the lord this is what the lord told me in the secret place he said i'm arising as a mighty man the blood of the innocent christ before me that's what the lord told me and the lord said a destroyer is going to move across the nations and the lord told me vengeance there will be vengeance upon witchcraft i had the lord and he revealed this to me my eyes was open in the spirit and i saw like a cloud moving across territories and the lord told me by the mystery of preservation you preserve my people that's why i'm carrying this oil is serving both as oil and spiritually as the mystery of the blood rise up on your feet and begin to blast in tongues thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her hey, the set time inside and outside pray hallelujah can we have the plates please very quickly lift your voice and say after me in the name of jesus come on say it like a believer in the name of jesus every power of witchcraft manipulating my life and my destiny by the mystery of the blood i command judgment upon you lift your voice and pray i shall not die but leave to declare in the name of Jesus every power that wants to cut short my life and exchange my life for someone else's own in the name of Jesus I come against you lift your voice and speak stargazers necromancers 
those that train the souls of men, they cut short destinies. Bible says this word has been tried seven times listen carefully it's not just a book that makes people spiritual it's more than that this is a compendium of the mind of Christ listen carefully the Bible is a compendium of the ways of God this is the ancient secret of an unbeatable life the ancient secret behind strange results those who can be foolish enough foolish enough childlike enough brothers and sisters this is the book that turns a poor man into levels of stupendous wealth this is the book that turns a sinner and makes he a man of god out of him listen to me this is the book that turns a man who cannot pay a rent of ten thousand to now own an estate this is a book that can make a confused young man not knowing what to do with his life to become one who will govern kings and nations this book has led many we are not the first to hold it there are many ancient hands that held this book they were stupid enough to read everything there and they believed God they believed him that's the point it's not just reading it they saw it and they believed and God performed wonders in and through their life today we have come in the midst of history we are not starting anything new we just have followed them who through faith and patience when they taught us they taught us to trust the word and so we believe the word listen it may not yet look like everything is appearing but let me tell you the truth your destiny is too small to make the word of God fail for the first time no sir no sir no sir god used this word to humble the pride of wicked kings who were, their confidence were built upon divinations that had been tried for a long time yet the word of god brought them to their knees if i trust any other thing in life and i do not trust the word of god i'm a foolish man praise the Lord this is the secret I have a name that I call the Bible I don't call it the Bible it is my roadmap to accessing the mysteries of the kingdom I study the Bible like an archaeologist like someone who has lost a treasure and is looking for it I keep saying it that the secret to the future is in the past when you can go behind the ancient part is not the part of a nomination the ancient part is a part where you open what did Jacob see what did the psalmist see and if the spirit of revelation opens your eyes to see it ah, brothers and sisters you create your own reality and walk in it as if Satan does not exist this is what makes those who don't understand these mysteries they think that you know when men of God talk like this they are arrogant your reality is based on what your eyes have seen you must believe this your reality is based on what your eyes have seen it is important for you to understand please let me have your attention it is very important there is nothing that is built by magic there is nothing that is built by gimmicks this is it if I ask you to stand up now and I tell you what is the basis of your confidence somebody will say my father is coming out for election and some person in presidency promised him that this turn is his turn to eat that is complete nonsense it's human beings that vote somebody in and out and they can change their minds overnight another person will say his brother is the manager of XYZ 
and because he's sitting on money he will bless him hear what the bible says he says for by the arm of flesh did you hear that by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail no man prevail do you know i have become addicted to this book it's not because i'm a preacher jesus gave a parable i did not understand for many years he said the kingdom is like a man who is looking for a treasure the treasure is missing and then he lights a candle and goes around the room the treasure is not the word the treasure is the result you are looking for but he tells you how to look for it you light the candle you carry an empty candle you you keep roaming around an empty candle is a bible you brought from zondavan and you drop that's an empty candle but when the illumination of the spirit is upon it you carry it and move around when you find it it comes life to you then you communicate a dimension of results that will dumbfound principalities and powers let me tell you don't ever doubt a man whose confidence is based on something he has caught in the word you will be angry forever you will dream forever <sighs> anything that is not a derivative of the word i don't trust it because i don't have control over it the bible says he upholds all things that includes my destiny he upholds all things by the word of his power we need to be a confident people listen us believers confident people a depth of conviction and persuasion that is brought about by this the illumination of the spirit upon this word so you search for it crime in scriptures is not just it's not the key to understand the word that's not just how it works many of us have memory of scripture which is not bad in itself except for the fact that it has no ability to empower you just like that it's like carrying granite seed and chucking it in your pocket do you have a harvest will it grow sir <clears throat> the word is the seed that's what jesus said the soil is your heart the rain is the holy spirit you can plant a seed and dry season will kill it into nothing the seed is not wrong but the anointing you see that the rain that comes upon the seed brothers and sisters please i want you to pay attention for every time god gives us the privilege to converge like this it is not the advancement of a man's agenda it is the progression of your accessing the mysteries that will cause you to command dominion let me tell you something there is a dimension of light that we are going to project to the world that will dumbfound principalities and powers yes a dimension of light young people will rise up with a level of strange prosperity that people will say no 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 are these guys scammers are they fraudsters we say no we found an ancient secret that can allow men to be blessed and focus on their assignment you see that you will rise with a strange level of the anointing that will make even her bodies to wonder and say i may have bodies but this is strange it will happen i am an archaeologist i search it i don't read the bible to finish it i read the bible to find what i'm looking for and sometimes you can find one verse and stay there that's where the goal is so if you are all you are doing is just to finish i read psalms 5 today you came close to the gold mine and carelessness took you away and you go somewhere it is scripture but it's not the word of god the word of god is that part of scripture that gives you life <laughs> so many people brag religiously I started studying the Bible by January and now I'm in Revelations 20 to call the person and say how many treasures did you find even one one the only thing they find is an accolade that I searched the scripture but someone will come with an honest heart and open one scripture you heard what that gentleman said he used the way the truth the life alone 
imagine what else we can find I've shared with you my vision years ago when I was caught up in the spirit and I saw a big gate and that gate was made of small small doors you know they were opening and closing and light was emitting from every one of them and then I kept looking and I noticed it was zoomed to me and I saw scripture written on every door and the doors were opening and closing and I was asking the Lord what is the meaning of this and the Lord said every time you catch a revelation the light component that is the performer of that revelation anything you claim you have caught and you cannot bring it to the scene is a lie you have not gotten it yet please pray and say Lord by your mercy open my eyes today this kind of prayer you must add the mercy of God in it because what else will you say by what Lord I cry by your mercy open my eyes to see you have spoken great things but until my eyes see it there is no possession it says as far as your eyes can see are we praying open my eyes show me where the anointing for the next level is open my eyes show me where the key to my lifting is open my eyes show me where the river is in the desert open my eyes oh god many people will be hearing many things but show me my own and the word of the lord came and the word of the lord came the word of the lord has always been around the word of the lord came let my word come the word of the lord came hallelujah listen let me teach you something about the mercy of god every time you want to access the spirit of revelation ask the lord to release it by his mercy there is no known formula i know for receiving the spirit of revelation it is by the mercy and the grace of god that the eyes of a man be open in scripture the eyes of a man was open when he said thou son of david have he didn't say thou son of david don't pass me by he would have remained there crying till jesus that was the last time jesus would pass jericho but i saw a relationship between the mercy of god and the spirit of revelation is thou son of david will i remain blind like this forever have he never said i want to walk the walking is a subset of the mercy when illumination come oh i want to see i want mm -mm. thou son of david have mercy it's a language god cannot pass by no matter what you know to do once god hears mercy he remembers the blood and he turns what should i do for you you didn't call me correctly oh i hope you know yes that's why i said mercy i don't even know your name i said son of david whether you are carpenter or jesus i added mercy to my confusion have mercy on me that's how you can see someone who will be bragging around i went to theological school and teaching nonsense and jargons and someone will sit down and say lord i came from the village there was no light in our community but lord i know that i've been seeing myself in dreams ministering and raising the, the dead and watches can you open my eyes by your mercy and the spirit of revelation comes boom one scripture he may not be able to quote everything one scripture and with that scripture you will do exploits i like you to prepare your spirit because what i want to share with you tonight will bless you in no small way people come to the house of god for many years Jimmy, and you find out that they are not growing how do you grow there are two indices for growth it's no confusion number one is the degree to which you are conforming experientially to the image of christ number two your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom if you are not understanding the precepts of the kingdom you are not growing sir whether they ordain you pastor 
apostle deacon once you are not accessing the midst of the kingdom you are not growing it's as simple as that because that's how we reign in this kingdom on the strength of mysteries what do you know now that took away fear from you the fear you had in january what entered you that can give you confidence to look at it and say no way not again if your fear of january is still your fear of today you made the word of god unfruitful in your life someone entered this year wondering and right now the person is just laughing at the same situation and says it and no 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 that one that was that was last year's challenge you won't talk that nonsense with me again because you know what to do not bold face for nothing for jesus himself knew what to do my assignment in this ministry is that by the privilege of god's election and grace i will continue to show you what to do the result you desire versus the mystery that connects it that's my assignment to continue to show you that the kingdom is a compendium of possibilities but accessing them are predicated upon your knowledge of the mystery allocated for that result not the mystery available the mystery that is allocated you want to be blessed anything in the bible will not bless you anyway you have to find the one that is allocated for you you don't put rice in a pot and when it boils you lift it up and see beans you will see food but not beans if it's beans you want to cook you better find out one where to get beans two how to cook it correct so anything in the kingdom is not what you are looking for there are people who are blessed financially but this sickness will kill you you go to the hospital and treat it to refuse to come brothers and sisters there is an allocation you have to find out there are pastors who are so anointed they can raise the dead but you they will never have up to 30 members there is a mystery that keeps men people are not stupid to just come and sit down sit outside endure all kinds of things no sir my assignment is that by the agency of the spirit that i communicate to you the mysteries when you gather them together like this it's like a chain that connects you and heaven when you move in life the moment a challenge comes you smile because you understand the key to address it fear and ignorance and pain is a revelation of your bankruptcy of the understanding of the mystery that is tied to a result you are looking for there are things i used to fear years ago i don't fear them again i didn't cast out the spirit of fear understanding took me out of that realm you see that yes so please i want us to focus when you see us cry for the spirit of understanding this thing is not just even this anointing because you see many people especially ministers this is what we are all looking for anointing anointing is not just a generic oil that comes on your head this anointing you see has dynamics it doesn't just work anyhow how many people are you going to lay hands on on your life won't it kill you there is a system there are many means of transportation there is bicycle there is jet if you want to arrive lagos with a bicycle you may die before you arrive there that's how the dispensing of the anointing is you will meet people there are knowing the vehicle is not just enough you must understand the system of helping it reach people there's somebody seated outside another overflow there's somebody online in another nation how do you if all you know is just to lay hands on people how do you bless those who are far please pray before i start teaching in one minute and say lord change my level insist please pray change my level paul said i went up by revelation show me something lord where i am is a revelation of my limited knowledge i take responsibility and i admit open my eyes satan can't be that powerful there's something i am not seeing Sabra kete suta balakusia maratusia. 
Lord I've been falling under the anointing but that anointing has not healed one sick body there is something I'm not getting I have been sowing seeds but a harvest has not been coming what is blocking it what more do I need to know hallelujah please sit down <laughs> mm. the bible says when you read ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 it says having their understanding darkened paul is teaching here and then he says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them ignorance alienates a man from the life of God the experience of that Zoe life are we together now that their understanding is darkened that's the issue then it says that as a result of that darkened understanding they are being alienated from the experience of the kingdom so they may have semblance of what should be but never enter into the experience of it most people are not in ignorance of what their life should be they know what they should become but the power to make it happen that is a derivative of light you know you should be more anointed than now you know you should be more prosperous but what is the limitation it says haven't their understanding darkened and then alienated from the life of god on the strength of the ignorance that is in them I came angry in my spirit oh we'll be we'll pray i trust god for grace so that we'll finish fast and just have some few minutes to pray first peter 5 10 just one scripture there is a level of rest i began to perceive in my spirit that many of us were ordained by god to enter this year that we have not entered and my assignment is to insist must force something to happen the bible says but the god of all grace listen who had called us into eternal glory by jesus christ after you have suffered there is endured endured with certain things a while what will he do make you perfect uh-huh establish you uh-huh strengthen you uh -huh. set to you give you stability these four things must happen to someone's life listen i really want you to believe me because believers are the ones who are possessors are we together it says after you have and you have put up with certain things for a while put up with poverty for a while put up with pain for a while put up with disappointment listen it can't be forever no sir a book has many pages when you stay on one page forever it's a course after you have suffered a while the bible says weeping and just for a night if you cry to the next morning cry in the afternoon cry till another night that crying has violated god's ordinances he allows people to only weep in the night after you have suffered for a while make you perfect establish you establish you then he says strengthen you all kinds of might financial might intellectual might then he says set to you set to you you are unmovable you have gotten to a level where you are not afraid uh -uh. the lord declared that this is a year of triumph i believe this so when god gave me this scripture it entered my spirit and the lord began to communicate to me and say son you have not hit my expectation for the year this triumph there is there is something there is there is a dimension of testimony that is not yet rampant here and there like rain people are getting it but it is in a ministry of thousands of people if only four people testify as the man of god not failed four over thousands is zero round it up is zero so there is a dimension 
the services that remain for this year will be very strangely prophetic services i tell you there are services meant at pushing people to force the reality of this world because brothers and sisters god cannot lie god cannot lie god cannot lie god cannot lie so the lord showed me this scripture and it really really blessed me tonight i'm going to teach very briefly on the mystery of divine intervention the mystery of divine intervention what is the spiritual secret behind calling god in the time of trouble and let him show up and bail you out what is the system in the kingdom that has been built where men when you need the help of god when your life is faced with an emergency and you need to call heaven brothers and sisters there are emergencies in our lives that require access to this system hmm. the mystery of divine intervention the bible is full of near near shame experiences where god got up showed up for individuals showed up for the nation of israel got the lives of people around overnight let me show you one scripture you will want to know second peter chapter 2 verse 9 learn this scripture add it to your spiritual arsenals you will need it i guarantee you second peter chapter 2 verse 9 i want us to run uh, tonight read it with me please one two read the lord knoweth how to deliver the godly from temptation or oppression or calamities and to reserve the unjust unto the day the lord knows how to exchange experiences that he looks as child and says for my name say come promise that he looks at this person who calls upon his name and watches that this guy is getting into trouble he says god knows how to exchange people and carry this person out and drop the wicked for the punishment that is allocated for the righteous is called intervention there is a system in god listen please there is a system in god where god can plug men out of the fire remember the story of the three hebrew boys the bible says they found the furnace seven times that those who threw them inside the furnace listen they threw them inside the furnace and the heat killed them and when four of them were inside the king was not a believer but the king had had strange encounters and he saw a face in that fire he had seen in his dream he said i i look and i see four people and the appearance of the fourth is like the son of god and the bible says they came out they could not even smell fire what of daniel that was thrown in the den of the lions because of his prayer life the bible says the lions were at peace with him and when he came out and they threw those other fellows the lions just devoured them brothers and sisters there is a mystery there is a hidden code of operation allocated to the saints in light to help them deliver them out of all us around there is a way you call upon god for your personal prayer life but brothers and sisters there is a way you call upon god to intervene on a matter that if he does not intervene sometimes it may be that you are finished there was a time death was killing people in israel killing people there was a way they called on god divine intervention is real all through scripture we see that god is able to arise psalms 102 verse 13 he says thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time in that there is a time oh there is a time to favor joshua selman there is a time to lift me and you see the bible says in amos chapter 3 verse 9 that god does not do anything but to reveal his secret to his servants the prophets so when god is about to do something in a territory he captures his thoughts in words in in similitudes in in all kinds of expressions communicates it to his servants to deliver to the people so that their faith will be connected to what he wants to do in the season and God has declared that it's a season of triumph. I believe God. 
it's not just a cliche that a man of God comes to move ministry forward no sir thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time the time to favor her the time to lift her the time to honor her for God's sake the time to wipe her tears the time for Zion to say I am also the bride of a good man he says the time has come thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her yea the set time is come many people want intervention intervention is the supernatural is a supernatural visitation over a man's situation that brings a radical transformation supernatural visitation of God supernatural visitation of God all of a sudden God steps in overnight and changes a man's situation overnight he says have you heard this proverb that a city was born in one day he said but as soon as zion travails in one day she shall put forth a son why do we need divine intervention because of our imperfection as human beings the first reason that necessitates divine intervention is that we are inaccurate as human beings our inaccuracy as human beings inaccuracy of understanding and obeying the precepts of God will necessitate God to create that provision are we together a man drinks and smokes and gets to a point where he now repents when his liver is quarter to die he has repented but the liver is still going to kill him that gentleman doesn't just need a healing he needs a divine intervention when somebody repents in the prison and is supposed to say 80 years and he went there at 40 you see that he's going to die in the prison he needs divine intervention he's born again but he's in the prison our families are in desperate need for divine intervention is that true Hmm. father not working mother not working 13 children 10 of them not working all of them graduates Hapa. there is need for a strange intervention how about human agents that will sit on your destiny and vow and say for as long as we are here we fraternize with darkness to jeopardize your confidence about God I wish there was no such reality but brothers and sisters the Bible did not leave us in the dark as to the wickedness that lies in our world I was talking with a young man on phone who sent me a text I think they worship one kind of idol and the father has been calling him I should come back there's something he's supposed to do the guy said he's not coming back after graduating from school they are asking you to come they will buff you put something on your head and one kind of ritual like this after that they'll say you can go the guy said it's not coming and the man told him that that thing whatever it is will pursue him and look for him with his blood father the boy was speaking to me and I said let me tell you my brother if you go there and carry yourself and go and sit down under that whatever it is and they buff you with the blood of an animal and do those rituals uh -uh. God is able rather than wasting your time paying transport use the money and buy a book that reveals a mystery that you you keep the enemy at bay because what that shrine is trying to prevent him from will look for him if he doesn't have the mystery allocated he can make bold face and say I won't go but you will soon find out that it will happen to him first child dull second child very dull that child very dull and the person says i'm brilliant my wife is brilliant and he sees that thing in the dream he say i i told you 10 years ago you would have rescued your children see 
don't reject darkness without having the light component don't just say i reject darkness uh, every shine in my village god forbid it's a joke you must have the light component otherwise i tell you to hunt you and tear you into pieces there are forces of darkness we need divine intervention because of our inaccuracy we need divine intervention because listen the pace at which darkness attempts to destroy us versus our level of spiritual growth will require divine intervention at some point now look at me listen let me tell you something in the next 10 years there are things that i will know then that i don't know now but satan is plotting all kinds of schemes over my life based on the knowledge i need to know 10 years to come i need intervention by the mercy of god to give me victory before i enter that level of understanding if my victory is purely left to my level of understanding alone it means that i will be punished on many grounds before i come into that knowledge you need divine intervention is god speaking to someone here let me tell you this i am very outspoken about results i'm not a man of god that will lie to you and say results don't matter it's a lie it's a lie if results don't matter why do you go to work why do you wait for salary at the end of the month is that true results matter to god matter to the devil matters to everybody on earth whether we agree or not results are consolations to your christian experience whilst it is true that we do not serve god just for results but brothers and sisters let me tell you even jesus saw a fig tree that was receiving nourishment from the principle he programmed in the earth and was not yielding the result he caused it in annoyance so god wants us to bear fruit but there are keys that we must understand please look up there are many of us here and there are many of our family members here had they known that there is a mystery that controls divine intervention many tragedies we now weep over would not have happened listen carefully are we together now yes somebody looked at you and vowed and said pastor alpha i will destroy you we said no problem you wouldn't destroy me but you did not understand the component the revelation component and eventually it caught up with you i pray for a lady she probably may be following now online married loved her husband all of a sudden the husband just changed and became a, a very very funny man doesn't even stay in the same room with her and all of that and she she could not take it again and she called me you know i prayed with that lady and just this morning she sent me a text she said she woke up in the morning and just saw her husband sitting by her bed something brought him listen listen this is what I, you see men are slaves to the mysteries that control them you can program things like a bomb in the spirit and just go and watch it the same way i can put a bomb and i program blow by eight o'clock and then i just move somewhere and i'm laughing at everybody around here because it must blow except another agency superimposes it this is how you can program results in the realm of the spirit and watch like a movie as they unfold in the earth realm using things you call circumstances coincidences but you know that they are intentional results that were programmed by mysteries this is how i want your life to be that you can sit down and program growth program speed program breakthrough and watch everything like a movie and day after day you watch someone get up and say sorry elijah i i, I hope this is a new keyboard i bought for you and you laugh something was programmed your house that has been 10 years refuse to be completed you program something by understanding and someone sam i don't know do you mind me complete this house and you will say yes because it was intentionally done you don't say i'm surprised you are coming i'm not surprised you were called that, are we together that's why when people die in the villages the harbalists don't cry have you ever seen them crying no something they programmed 
they program somebody from london and tell him where to come and die when he dies other people are crying at the guy says well it's just to let you know that we are not children you can program things from the foundations of the earth some things were programmed and the intelligence of the father he watched everything unfold through redemption no power could stop it satan tried he entered he went when jesus was fasting and entered peter now came and entered when he entered judas i'm sure satan thought he was smart paul was watching it like a movie and saying yeah yeah had they known this so this was the caricature that god was making out of satan he thought he was smart but he was god was using him as a slave because you see when you kill into scripture his blood will haunt you so god made sure it was satan that killed jesus yeah go and read your bible blood is a mystery it remains on the head of the killer forever paul was watching this whether he was in a hole in a cave in prison i don't know but paul was saying ah, ah. satan couldn't you Jesus casted you out of peter and left you in judas you didn't ask why you just continued until you became a fool that's the reason why when we invoke the blood something really happens it happens to whoever was the killer when Cain killed Abel blood cried against him cried against him <laughs> I need divine you need divine intervention Samaria needed divine intervention please sit down they got to a point scripture says come to a point where women can you imagine brothers and sisters that you get to a point where you are not just eating goats you are not just eating clothes women you have your child i'm telling you there is a strange grace this year for fruitfulness and miracles in this ministry we have seen very dramatic manifestations and and all of that there are mothers all around with their children moving left, right and center now imagine pastor alphas that little baby imagine annie holding this a child and saying look there is so much poverty pastor alpha travels somewhere to go and look for food and she liasses with a jimmy's wife two of them they carry jael and carry david and two of them stand and agree and they say we are eating jael this night you eat it what sort of hunger makes you eat a whole human being now watch this then the bible says they ate the first one then the next day it was the turn to eat the other one and the mother said no and the woman said no you ate my child listen while that confusion was happening the king started passing and they went they said king you can't leave us like this and when all of that happened the king said look for elisha for me look for elisha for me because he had that elijah program farming he said i'm sure elisha has a hand in this trouble go and look for this 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 guy was mentored by the troublemaker of israel go and look for elisha watch this while all of this suffering was happening the bible says elisha and the sons of the prophet were he didn't say they were hungry when he saw the king coming he said this son of a murderer wants to now come and kill me oh yeah you push you stop him and because of that it's okay now he's called my attention let me casually do something about what is killing a nation by this time kabakoto sakataya by this time tomorrow by this time tomorrow listen he didn't tell you how it will happen if you understand the superiority of the realm of the spirit you will never ask how results manifest you see let me tell you something when people argue and say how did this thing happen they are not wise the raw materials that create the earth are resident within the realm of the spirit he said by this time tomorrow by this time i'm hurrying up i would have given you scriptures but i really want us to pray that by this time tomorrow they call a, please help them this will cause this and that and then a foolish man like many doubters that insult men of god he said what are you saying i mean i'm the minister of this and that i read this and that even if the windows AJ, 
he knew that much that heaven had a window with what did they build the window he never asked if god will open the window will these things be and the prophet said me you will see it all but they will kill you in front of that breakthrough then look at how the miracle happened the prophecy had been programmed in the spirit now it is up to the world this is where the wisdom of god starts he starts searching for scenarios in the earth that can bring what is in the spirit to manifest are you seeing how prophecy comes to pass watch this look at this let me teach you something watch this look at me and learn if i prophesy to you emeka and say by tomorrow if it is really by the spirit i say by tomorrow money is coming to your account i have placed that word in the spirit hold on the word manifests by the wisdom of the spirit let me tell you what the wisdom of the spirit is it will start searching the earth to look for the scenario on earth that is capable of bringing that word down then connect it to the individual listen the wisdom of god will move to a rich man if it's not open it will move to somebody who god had instructed to so if he will keep moving like that that's how the anointing got to mary to be the mother of jesus the bible never said the name of the mother of jesus will be mary the prophecy started searching for a virgin when he found one and she said i'm available he brought her out listen there are too many activities on earth that can mirror what is happening in the heavens for God to be bankrupt in terms of manifestation when God says I want to bless you Koi is already speaking to millions of people to sow it's just that he has not told them who to sow the wisdom of God can just connect one of them you see how prophecy works I'm helping your faith so that when God says I will do this you now sit with your limited mind and say I only know uncle A and B and I already know a promise you will never see me and God is saying no we are talking about the wisdom of the creator look at what happened four lepers everybody say four lepers four lepers were sitting quietly and the wisdom of God the spirit of wisdom because the word of God must come to pass the man of God had declared it and the, the anointing came on the lepers they thought they were just tired but they didn't know that at that point they were under the influence of a man of God and the word started programming that result they say why sit here till we die even that talk was by the spirit they thought they were gisting and they said look let's just get up and go to the camp of our enemies and tell them kill us but let's eat first the bible says the moment they began to go god changed their people they began to hear the sounds of chariots and all of them, listen were they not warriors is it not fight they fought to get those things couldn't they fight again when god wants to bless you he will move your enemy in a way that you will not even know how things happen I know I should not graduate but there is a mystery that can be programmed a man is watching your result 37 over 50 you need 50 something comes on him and he right and he does not even know listen listen people some people hear the testimony of some of our some of the people who wrote jam here that jam changes from 100 and something to two and you hear them talking nonsense talking stupid things and saying how can it happen and I said look, look at this foolishness how does a boil come out of your stomach where did the mass accumulate from that projected out did any part of your body reduce for it to come out did he ask where it came from then when it disappears you say where did it go to you see how we think son of man can these bones live again immediately oh not after 10 years not gradually can these bones live again he said god i've seen many miracles but i've not seen this type that a dry bone is not like a dead human being i believe in raising the dead but dry bones 
and he said okay i want to show you something that when i show up i compress time and make things happen and he said prophesy prophesy and things began to shift listen it is too late when mysteries have been programmed in the spirit take it from me the moment a man programs something in the spirit you better find a way of countering it in the spirit otherwise it must manifest <laughs> this is what herbalists do they conjure things they conjure spirit and then they tell the person go it is done at the point they said go it is done he didn't feel anything oh go we shall be we put your husband in a bottle and you saw it go it is done the woman will go home and still see her arrogant husband come back and she'll be laughing he's already in a bottle two days later physical things start happening in the earth to force him to confirm to what has been programmed after one week the man becomes a toy to her because the realm of the spirit must so you look at a woman who is barren it may look like you just touched her stomach but it's more than that mysteries were programmed in the spirit they said how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man he says the power of the highest brothers and sisters i came to prophesy to someone it will be a quick walk oh it will be a quick walk it will be a quick walk i tell you except it's not the god i told you that the remaining services don't miss them they will be help them please they will be strongly prophetic services strongly prophetic services it will be a quick walk there is a mystery that can push men false prophecy push men it will that in one day something can happen to you and you will turn and say god i'm sorry for doubting you when it was time for the animals to enter the ark of noah he didn't call one of them something was manipulated in the spirit all the animals started lining up regardless of their hostilities they lined up and came quietly listen let me tell you something the day i learned the vanity of the physical realm compared to the spiritual realm i stopped wasting my time about physical things Tr trust me i really mean it i saw how helpless the physical realm is that a body without a spirit is dead i stopped wasting my time those who do business do it in the spirit realm they program spirit realm and just watch like strangers how things manifest you program favor and you come and see strangers bringing blessings and people say how is it happening you see what is happening in this ministry submit to you it was programmed it's not a coincidence something took you from where you were and brought you here it's not just that you like a man no it's a mystery that is the same thing that will put a baby in the barren womb it's not when a man meets his wife that she gets pregnant to a man meets his wife to give the child physical form Do you believe what I'm saying? Because let me tell you something. One of the things we are going to do tonight is to change some things. There are results that are wrong. Something programmed it. It may be our ignorance. It may be something. I bring you a message of hope. The realm of the spirit is still there. That means there is still an ability to access it. Please sit down. I'm just trying to compose myself. My spirit is boiling this night. Listen listen i have experimented this thing too many times too many times too many times you can program favor you can program breakthrough listen you can program judgment on the wicked you can program speed the word of god is an instrument of creation 
you can create realities that were not there when you hear people testify it's not like the testimony was waiting somewhere a word created it when you are programming mysteries you don't attach a face to it the wisdom of god will create the actors of that mystery in the physical realm you don't say god bless me through my uncle uh -uh. i have access the principles that brings a blessing it is god that will start sourcing for the men that will act the movie that will bring your breakthrough he can use a donkey he can use stone it doesn't matter the most important thing is that let it come Are we together? Yes. Ah, I tell you, believe me, brothers and sisters, when I tell you there are more angels on this ground than people sitting. There are more angels, angelic presence. I don't know if it's because of what I'm teaching tonight, but I prayed for strange intervention angelic interventions and the Lord is just opening my eyes and I'm seeing that there are numerous angels battalions of angels every time God opens do you know why when I speak like this people start manifesting under the anointing because you see when you are open to the realm of the spirit portal is created immediately do you understand and when that portal is created there must be an effect remember when Paul Saul now saw Jesus those there did not see but there was an effect from the realm of the spirit I'm explaining it because it's nothing strange but I stand and I see angels inside outside like this i'm even on that fence you are seeing i'm seeing all kinds of things happening and this is by the power of the spirit i believe that not all the angels are the same they are according to their ranking and their functions according to what kind of intervention must manifest because see our challenges are not the same i know some of you may not have issues but let me tell you there are people the issues you have require recovery restoration judgment on somebody so there are angels that are allocated for that kind of thing was it not an angel that used hailstone and killed hundreds of thousands of people overnight please help them I release angels strange ministry of intervention brakoto soto ketabarata zegetekata by the authority of the most high angelic interventions over lives and families it must end tonight in the name of jesus is the year of triumph it must end tonight thou shall arise thou shall arise thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion thou shall arise god is arising over a family god is arising over a family Listen, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. You see, Ba, when you come before God's presence, the Bible tells us that upon Mount Zion many things happen. The innumerable company of angels. These things are not fables. 
the bible is not a book for religious people it is life it is true it is our own belief that has made it look like a storybook that you come to his presence and there is a strange intervention i say it again in the name of jesus as i begin to teach i've not finished but in jesus name i release the ministry of angels I release the ministry of angels that whilst the teaching is going on let intervention start in the name of Jesus Christ strange interventions strange interventions please sit down if you can please help those outside very quickly I will give us four keys let's use 10 minutes sorry i will not be explaining it in depth i want us to pray i want us to pray i want us to pray i feel the spirit of prayer here there are four keys to provoking divine intervention every time you are in a situation where you need the help of heaven urgently do these four things and you will change the tides in a way that will surprise you listen brothers and sisters as you learn these mysteries please use them don't be too big to use them be childlike and apply them you will be surprised these are not cunningly divine fables these are things that i do myself they are not necessarily things i'm just telling you just for for you know just the sake of it the first thing to do when you are in need of strange intervention is engage in the ministry of prayer number one please quickly prayer i'll give you two scriptures and then we'll, we'll be able to look at two write it down please acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11 talks about peter don't don't project it i just want to hurry up in acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11 the bible tells us how that james was caught by herod he was beheaded and when it pleased the jews he now caught peter and locked him and then the bible says the brethren began to pray whilst they began to pray an angel came into the prison brought peter out peter even thought he was having a vision until he took him out and then peter was free we see that prayer was part of the instruments that were used was used to bring strange and divine intervention acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11 please write this down acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34 it's a long reading don't project it just write it down acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34 this was um a scenario where paul casted out the demon from the lady that was using divination to prophesy and then the people got angry and they mobbed them you know and then the bible says that they chained them and they were kept under the custody of a jailer then the bible says paul and silas prayed and they sang and the bible says everyone in the prison had them all of a sudden there was an earthquake and then the bible says the chains broke and all doors open i like that all doors it didn't say some doors when the chain broke all doors the doors of the prison of other people connected to them also open all doors open prayer can open doors james chapter 5 verse 13 maybe you can project that he said is any of you afflicted let him pray prayer is the re biblical recommendation for affliction if any of you afflicted he said let him pray so whenever you are afflicted the key is to pray you may not know what to do i'm teaching you what to do now but regardless of what the situation is pray especially engaging in the spirit the most the most sound way to engage warfare prayers especially is to pray in the spirit first as you pray in the spirit the holy spirit begins to construct the scriptures in your mind you will not utter them just as words you will utter them as prophecies that's what we leave to bring the result so the first key is not just to start talking uh, you take out time and pray in the spirit that's why it is important to be filled with the holy ghost with a clear evidence of praying in tongues it's not a phenomenon for pentecostals there is a dimension of victory you will never be able to command are we blessed 
is any among you afflicted has any of you received a bad report has any of you been told that you have so 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 time to leave has any strange spirit appeared to anybody and said you will not see christmas so when others are rejoicing don't join them the key is not to get up and cry has any stranger come to you while you sleep and try to molest you and you just got up and said this thing has come again no sir has the door foreclosed towards you so the people who used to help you suddenly have changed the people who used to like you suddenly have changed the doors that used to bring you blessings have changed something is suddenly happening to your spiritual life prayer zero word life zero you need an intervention prayer the scripture i want us to read now is psalms 18 never forget this scripture is one of the arsenals that i have for my personal um is a scripture that has blessed me i have prayed this scripture if if this scripture was a shook by now i would have maybe the soul would have eaten into pieces i'm giving you a piece of my secret place psalm 18 don't ever forget that scripture don't ever forget it for as long as you live if you are a leader going far this is a chief tool that you need we are going to read from verse 1 to 6. Then I will pick for you the verses we are reading. It's a long verse. Ready? Please give it to us. 1 to 6. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Listen. My God, my strength in whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord. I will do what? call upon the lord in prayer who is worthy to be praised so by calling upon him shall i be saved from my enemies verse 4 the sorrows of death compass me this is a man in trouble and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid the sorrows of hell compass me about the snares of death prevented me in my distress hallelujah i didn't discuss it with people who cannot help me i called upon the lord and cried upon unto my god he heard my voice from out of his temple and my cry came before him even to where even to his ears there is a kind of cry that enters the ears of the mighty god let's jump to verse 14 then to 17 then 40 to 45 it's a quick reading verse 14 yeah he sent out his arrows god has arrows so hey look up i learned this i was checking arrows you know arrows that fly by day and then i found out that it's not only the devil god the bible says yeah this is him intervening for me these are part of the forces from his cabinet of judgment that he can release he says he sent out his arrows and scattered them and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them 17 please give us 17 he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me for they were too strong for me verse 40 thou hast also given me the necks of my enemy that i may destroy them that hate me they cried but there was none to save them even unto the lord but he answered them not 42 we're really reading to 48 then did i beat them small as the dust before the wind and did cast them out of the dirt in their streets 43 oh dear media thou has delivered me from the strivings of my people and thou hast made me the head of the hidden a people whom i have not known shall serve me pastor you need this for your ministry oh. when you open a branch in a locality that you don't know there are people who need to come and as soon as they hear of me they shall obey me the strangers shall submit themselves to me 45 verse 45 
the stranger shall shake, fade away and be afraid out of their close places now 47 to 48 is a scripture i don't want you to ever forget ready go ahead give us well go to 47 go to 47 it is god that avenged me and subdued the people under me who did it who did it he says it is god that avenged me and subdued the people under me 48 he delivered me from my enemies yea thou lifted me up above those that rise up against me thou hast delivered me from the violent man divine intervention as a man of god there are wicked forces day and night to destroy you as a leader there are wicked forces but when you catch this and catch the revelation you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death and the lord will be with you mysteriously you will not travel and sit down and be shaking will a car jam me will it break my leg will it break my head no sir rest and quietness on the strength of scripture everybody say prayer, prayer. we need to learn how to call upon the lord listen do you know most people don't know how to call upon the lord they know how to lament hey oh you are not calling upon the lord you are shouting a lamentation a, a strategy for lamentation that you inherited he said unto thee oh lord do i lift up my soul oh my god let me not be ashamed though let not my enemies triumph over me there is a way you can pray with god sometimes like anna you can't even shout it's not something you you just lie down and say oh god oh god deliver me from the shame of the wicked there are enemies that are waiting to see you fail so that it will be their prophecy fulfilled lord confound their their counsel and god will say it got to my ear i had it i'm on my way coming prayer number two the second key when you want to activate the mystery of divine intervention is to engage praise with understanding praise 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 as an instrument of warfare and praise as an instrument of faith praise as an instrument of warfare but that you are blessing him in advance listen this revelation is fast becoming a national anthem in the body of christ people are suddenly coming to the realization that praise can work wonders you know people don't know why the presence of god is still mighty in africa is because africa is a prison continent yes yes sir yes sir they laugh at us and think that when we are dancing is nonsense praise is a mystery you want to turn around your situation no matter what you do if you have not praised there is no lord believe me lord give us understanding psalm 22 verse 3 it says thou art holy thou that inhabitest the praise of zion god makes the praise of men his habitation but thou art holy O thou that inhabitest the praises of joshua selman listen i've taught us how to praise you don't praise god without dancing that that is nonsense you are you are singing a national anthem is where you are reciting national anthem that you stand and put your hand on your chest moving your body is not a sign of is not you are not you have problems you can cry but still praise are we together is this is a it's a powerful mystery i want you to learn Our father bishop david oedeko when he almost had a few weeks ago he almost had a plane crash that would have taken his life as soon as that happened they declared praise i said oh dear spiritual intelligence let me tell you what other people would have done they would have organized a cocktail party and said you know we and the devil said that's i'm coming back praise praise is one of the most powerful ways to disgrace the devil because you see let me tell you one of the
depression is the absence of laughter and joy satan using when people are about to die there are few people who die smiling most people are depressed then they keep quiet he says that the joy of the lord shall be your strength so when there is no joy your spirit becomes broken and the bible says a broken spirit dry yet the bones you don't praise god when things are going well you praise god to make them go well listen you don't praise god when when things are going well and you praise god it's called thanksgiving thanksgiving is the dance you give and the testimony you give when things have manifested but before they manifested it's called perfected praise praise with understanding lord you are so good you are worthy of all my praise lord you are so good you are exalted as the lord most high hold on listen let me tell you what satan will tell you the moment you sing that he will tell you is it not your sister that just died is it not five carryovers we are seeing or oh god did they not just sack you ah the gentleman that has been promising to marry you is it not by 8 a.m this morning he says not doing again the devil brings it because he knows you see satan knows that we function in the realm of the flesh the senses are we together now so he brings things that resonate with your senses when you see them you are now depressed but that's the time anytime you are praising god satan says why are you praising him he said, no reason i'm praising him to create my testimony you see that listen corporate dancing and praising is good but you must learn to do this thing alone if it means you trusting god to get one small room for yourself for the purpose of praise is what it all is what it reserve the forty thousand for shoes and use it to pay for a small room put worship wake up in the night because there is personally me i don't have time to do that dance and praise in the afternoon all kinds of calls distracting in the night oh dear oh dear ask god what i do in the night yes yes sometimes i carry koinonia documents drop it on the ground dance before it and shame the devil I carry my phone put it there I'm not dancing before them I say Lord you are great I dance before you people are coming from everywhere rain or no rain publicity or no publicity and God says you are doing this for me I say Lord who else will I do it for and you are celebrating him Lord you are faithful and you are worshiping him you are sweating like a fool and while you are doing that god is dispatching angels okay make sure you wake that guy to transfer money to his account that hundred thousand i gave you i didn't tell you who to send it to send it to him oh his mother is at home for giving birth to him send an angel there too my innocent mother is lying down she'll wake up in the morning and say mama where are you say who are you say just come take my praise this our big manism has cheated us beyond imagination this pride that you don't have results and you are still talking you know ah I, how can, okay i agree that you can't you think i can dance look at me you think no 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 god i don't have that gift of dancing it's not a competition this is your destiny this is breakthrough if a thief puts a god and says you should dance won't you do something some of us when we were in the world you know the kind of dance demonic satanic dance that you did for the devil for free that destroyed you you got drunk dancing it a spirit entered you dancing it i'm not saying you should dance kinds of nonsense dance in the house of god but i'm saying that there are times you need to learn to sing and dance alone with listen listen most people dance you can turn your dancing time to a nightclub and god will look at you and say you are wasting your time it is the revelation that makes the singing and the dancing profitable don't just move your body around just because you are happy that, that's that's entertainment 
brothers and sisters there is the kind of dance that you dance with tears in your eyes but you are doing it with understanding don't think you will only always be laughing are you hearing what i'm saying yes no job for you no job for your wife no job for your five children they are all graduates you have prayed oh nothing happened brothers and sisters try singing and celebrating god everyone in their room rejoicing jesus you are full and you are just dancing let me tell you what will happen the lord will start bringing testimonies remember when a car would have killed you in 1995 and you say lord i remember oh, and you start dancing it you are you are compressing doubt because something is about to be created you would dance and dance till you fall under the anointing there and get up and clean yourself and be tired and sleep and wake up and drag yourself brothers and sisters you have programmed something in the spirit you will get up in the morning and just dress and say father thank you and get a phone call who is this i'm seeing a document that has been here four years on my table who are you so i finished for what did you read anyway it's not what you read where are you come quickly i like you ha! you just know that praise is working praise is working let the people praise me psalm 67 verse 5 to 7 let the people praise me it's an instruction the earth has been programmed to deliver certain results but let the people praise thee O god let all the people praise thee verse 6 then shall the earth yield her increase and god even our god shall bless us you can stop there zephaniah it may be difficult for some of us to find but just write media please give it to us zephaniah chapter 3 let's read 14 to 20 i hope we can just quickly hurry up zephaniah chapter 3 zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 14 we're reading to verse 20 listen it says sing O daughter of zion he's not talking about a lady he's talking about human beings you must read the bible prophetically when he says daughter find out what he means there are times in the bible all people are sons there are times all people are daughters are we together so don't think he's talking to ladies sing O daughter of zion shout O israel be glad and rejoice with all the heart O daughter of jerusalem we're reading to verse 20 the lord had taken away thy judgments and has cast out thine enemy the king of israel even the lord is in the midst of thee thou shalt not see evil anymore in that day it shall be said to jerusalem fear thou not and to zion let not thine hands be slack we're reading to verse 20. give us 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with what? Singing. Singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly. Who are of thee. To whom the reproach of it was a burden. Verse 19. Behold at that time. I will undo all that afflict thee and I will save her that halted and gather her that was driven out I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame hmm. at that time I will bring you again even in the time that I will gather you for I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes say the Lord you read that scripture and say Lord whether you understand it or not I am dancing with this revelation that you are turning something I can see everything hey, hey. Do you see everything? I can see everything. One more time. Can see everything.
everything turning around. Please sit down. When you go back home, continue. 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 Apostle, I don't have a house. Find a tree. Find somewhere. It is a place that will give you a house, my brother. I'm staying with neighbors. I don't want to disturb them. Find somewhere behind one rock. You don't have to shout and disturb the neighborhood. Just engage in praise. Glorify God. You may be tired, but it's called a sacrifice of praise. Brothers and sisters, do this and see how things will turn in your life. There's nothing the devil can do with someone who is full of joy and glory. This gloominess that you see people tie their face around, it doesn't bring breakthrough. It adds to your sorrow. You loosen up and say, Father, you are faithful. You are tying your face around and people say, why are you? Why should I not tie my face? And will you pay my rent for me? My brother, it's praise that will pay that rent. So you turn everything and rejoice. Let me tell you what many people will say who see you engaging this. <laughs> they say, don't mind all these men of God. They are turning you people to be stupid. You see that? But when you meet them for rent, they won't give you. If you want God's results, follow his methods. Number three, quickly. The third key to activating the mystery of divine intervention is called seed faith. Say after me, seed faith. Listen, I know that giving has been abused. Listen carefully, please. Outside, online, listen carefully. I know that giving has largely been abused because it has looked like some manipulation and journalists and bloggers have not done justice because they have mixed everything and made it look like giving and sacrifice is some gimmicks to corner money and give a man of God. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Something I do all the time, including today. Every time you are in a situation, listen please. Every time you are in a situation that only God can step in with understanding, haven't prayed, package a seed, speak to that seed and give it an instruction. And sow that seed, release. If you just sow money, is bribery. It's not the money. Revelation. The Bible is full of the potent power of seed faith connecting your faith with a seed and a sacrifice to provoke god's hand for intervention i've done it countless times on behalf of this ministry i've done it countless times on behalf of myself my family my friends people i love seeds the seed that is in your hand can create a destiny that will surprise you if you know what to do with it please listen to me don't think i'm asking you to give me money no there are people who when they hear this they just frown their face not at all not at all god has been faithful to me are we together listen there are people who have turned their lives around overnight if there is one thing i know in my little work with god is that your seed can bruise the head of the serpent i promise you I have seen people quarter to shame. Everything was against them. It was obvious they are finished. And they used their seed and turned the hands of life in a way that you cannot imagine. My life is full of sacrifices. Psalm 126, don't turn there. Verse 1 to 6, you write it that when the lord turned again the captivity of zion he said we were like them that dream the first six verses the la the sixth verse ends by saying they that sow in tears the whole verses are connected verse six is connected to verse one god turning away the captivity of zion like a dream he says that they that sow in tears will reap in joy he that weepeth bearing precious seeds the bible says shall doubtless return rejoicing bringing in the sheaves it's not every seed to be cheerful does not mean to laugh to be cheerful means that there be a merriment in your heart there are some times you will cry for the seeds you sow hallelujah 
someone came over to my place today and the lord instructed him to bring me a seed and quite a very serious seed just you know a military officer just came dropped the seed and when i saw it the seed was in dollars I said wow in this recession this seed and the lord told me no 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 make sure you don't touch it this is your seed for something and the lord told me i started dancing i said thank you jesus this is it. when god gives you seed to sow is intervention oh. getting the seed to sow is an act of god's mercy that you say lord i must provoke this but i have no seed then he gives seed to the sower those who know only know how to eat anything plus their destiny they keep getting bread but those who want to create a future brothers and sisters i have created realities in my life with seeds i believe in the power of a seed listen don't let people because of their cynicism the imbalance when a man creates an imbalance in scripture you don't avoid that truth because it has been abused you bring it to context and teach people brothers and sisters a seed can change your life believe me i have done crazy things in my life i thank god that is only god that reveals that, that is only god that knows the heart of men there are things if i tell you that i have done with seeds some of you you are not related to me but you will be angry you will remove your shoe and stone me with it and say you are very stupid in this recession seeds there was a year i've shared it again and again that god gave us an instruction we were just resuming koinonia and god gave an instruction he said so everything 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 i don't mean small so everything let it go i said thank you jesus you are ready to lift us that is revelation by faith abel offered you offer by faith you don't offer by by tricks and all kinds of no 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 and we release it brothers and sisters it didn't reach seven days seven days more than ten times that amount came seeds i'm not saying you should give carelessly no but brothers and sisters the seed that is in your hands can silence a spirit that has destroyed your destiny for years nobody is moving forward in your family you are just sitting down and god is saying look you have to provoke heavens with a sacrifice one day you get angry and say lord i am tired of this anna did not have money to give but she said lord let's do it give me the child i've given the child already as a seed and god said it's a done deal there was a king in the bible who they wanted to slaughter and defeat it was very clear the nation of israel would defeat them and he carried his son his future and slew the child the bible says an indignation rose up to heaven battle ended when god wanted to redeem man it was an issue of urgency god carried jesus the lamb upon the throne slew him jesus cried and god said that's not the issue man must be saved this greed over the little we have is what has destroyed us get used to money leaving you to go and wait for you in your future get used to it you may not have a seed but brothers and sisters let me tell you there are many ways to give money is not the only seed it's just the seed that can easily be exchanged that's why there are times that people have made radical sacrifices do you believe what i'm teaching you principles of divine intervention trace your life at the moment where god gave you specific instructions that you did things that almost brought tears from your eyes and watch what happened you just did not study it enough to know how to keep it going I hardly share my testimonies i stopped because i found out that it annoys a lot of people 
and I'm not ready to attract unnecessary um, you know people once they hear preachers talk there are people who just get angry just like that it's nonsense brothers and sisters learn to sow seeds but the most powerful part of sowing seeds is to give them instructions this is the mistake many of us have been making you package a seed some of you come and join the line apostle here is a seed i'm sowing i always ask people what is this for and the people say for nothing just i just feel like seeing you that's a donation that's a donation brothers and sisters all seeds are not the same there is a seed you give to the poor there is something it does to you there is a seed that you give to widows and orphans there is a kind of result there is a seed you put on the ground because you are tired of where you are if the word of god were a lie i would have died since because the risk i've taken with this word it would have killed me since but i believe him i believe him when i sowed that seed today i was happy the joy that filled my heart i await the testimony that comes from it wanting a harvest that you have not scheduled to sowing is a waste of time is imagine now somebody who didn't go to the farm he has a land somewhere he just carries his wife and his children and carries a truck and he goes to an empty place you will find wheat there but whoever sowed january february down to april is smiling right now because he knows it's harvest time brothers and sisters i pray for us may god kill greed from our life this attachment to money listen this many people think wealthy people are the ones who are attached to money it's a lie wealthy people in the kingdom have become wealthy because they have conquered it your seed is an instrument that creates your future hallelujah learn to release seeds learn to release seeds learn to release seeds i'll never forget a gentleman who sent me a text he sowed a seed i remember it was when he sent me the text truly speaking i remember they sowed seeds and i was opening the envelopes most times it takes it honestly takes a while maybe some days before i even open the envelope to see what is there and pray on it and i opened the envelope and i saw five naira and a letter the guy said this five naira was his isaac i know you will laugh and say hey, hey, hey this stupid boy no i respected that because that that thing i knew will create a harvest and the guy i opened it and wrote some things like that and then i just felt led to pray for him do you know it didn't reach two weeks the guy sent me a text and said i have never in my life seen favor like this five naira it's not about the money it's about the heart somebody was tired of where how many jobless people have not sown anything and they keep moving around with cv what must tell you the devil is fighting you you carry a seed and say god please i'm married with three children no job this mockery must end i drop this and I tie it to my job and then praise around that seed praise around the seed and your brothers and sisters say so this is what they are teaching you this is how these stupid men of god keep eating your money and all of a sudden the heaven opens breakthrough upon breakthrough you are praying to buy land oh lord please give me two million naira to buy land i now have 150 thousand just top it up for me and god says you mustn't buy it just learn let me show you and all of a sudden someone stands up and blesses you i think it was you Jimmy. i was showing you was it yesterday i was showing him the documents of a property that was given to me recently i said god what is this what is this for as long as you sow, whether you like it or not the law is that you must reap so if you have not sown anything stop stop saying god where is my harvest and he said what what are you saying a woman who does not take in is she expecting a child no sir no sir she do seasons of breakthrough in your life your seed is a weapon not just your prayer your seed is a weapon 
your seed is a weapon one mama called me one time i was led by god honestly i felt so i didn't know how to talk to her because she sounded like an elderly woman and she was praying for divine financial intervention i said mama please i want you to sow a seed not to me i did i would never have the effrontery to tell that woman to sow into my life i'm sure that woman will be older than my mother i said please try connect with a seed and the woman said she doesn't have anything i say it's not true mama there is something you have what do you do she says she farms yam i say carry four or five tubers of yam find any church i said which church is close around your area she said there's living faith i said go there find four tubers of yam tie it and be praying singing any song in your language you know while you march to the pastor's um uh, what do you call it the pastor's office whether the pastor is eating the yam or not is not his business only a stupid man of god resents the seed of a desperate believer it's not whether you are more than 50 percent of the things people sow into my life i don't need it it's not for me i recognize what it is is god speaking to someone seed faith learn to connect learn to connect learn to connect learn to connect in first king 17 when our time is gone just write it we don't have to project it first king 17 from verse 7 to 6 from verse 7 to 16 first kings chapter 17 when you read from verse 7 to verse 16 the bible talks there about brook cherith when it dried during the famine and the bible says that the lord told elijah to go to a place called zarephath and he said there was a widow there god wanted to intervene in that widow's life when the prophet got there he said give me water she was running to go and bring water and he said please and make some bread for me and the woman said i'm sorry man of god i respect you but honestly this is the last one i'm about to eat with my son so that we'll just wait until we die and the prophet said no no when you give it does not end when you give you extend the life of whatever it is the prophet was teaching her he said make it for me first in our generation they said that's a heartless and wicked and devilish prophet but the moment she did that the bible says she lived off what was there until the famine was over you can change your life november december is too short a time now november december is too short a time brothers and sisters god can step into your life and do something in your life that you cannot imagine don't be surprised that you'll be celebrating new year in your own house whereas right now you don't even have land i'm talking to believers don't be surprised that you can give away up to five ten million by december whereas what you have in your account now is not up to ten thousand listen i'm not talking nonsense i'm not stupid don't be surprised that after 10 20 years that your wife has been buried that she's going to celebrate new year two months pregnant you do every calculation you know it's not up to two months but she's two months pregnant don't ask where the child came from that right now you are not even sure where your certificate is because you are tired you have thrown it somewhere but don't be surprised that you will be managing a business by the end of this year is it not god we are talking about is it not the god of heaven we are talking about number four the fourth key is the power of prophecy the power of the prophetic weapons of supernatural intervention the power of prophecy second kings chapter 7 verse 1 to 8 we've already discussed it just write it down second kings chapter 7 from verse 1 to 8 the story of elisha in samaria and the abundance that came to an entire land because there was a divine intervention by prophecy hosea chapter 12 from verse 13 please give it to us the bible says and by a prophet listen carefully and by a prophet it says the lord brought israel out of egypt how did they come out of egypt 
by a prophet not by God you will think God will say oh by me yes it is by God but the instrument that he used was a prophet and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved listen there are challenges that people go through in life that is totally needless if only they can locate a genuinely anointed prophet of God you can come out of a situation overnight some battles are totally needless they are products of pride and ignorance take note of these things I'm saying pride and ignorance some battles are totally needless there is enough grace and anointing to bail people out of it A gentleman had been writing i think it was wayek or neko i can't remember for over maybe six seven years i remember one time he came and he was crying i didn't want to allow him to finish i said that's all right let me pray for you it is done and he just went and the guy testified that truly speaking he answered nonsense in the exam because his brain had he had stretched the thing he has passed the age that he should be concentrating to be reading for wayek and yet it came out he had all credits like that and he said truly this is my result i say of course it's not your result god gave you to help you move forward of course it's not your result when other people are celebrating their intelligence you go to god and say thank you this one you gave me there are things when other people are saying i got you turn to god and say this one came from you prophetic intervention brothers and sisters god still has anointed men who yes an anointed man is not a man who speaks well an anointed man is not a man who throws people under the anointing there are people who are privileged by the election of grace that god has put ancient ancient possibilities within them for the sake of the body your own price is to believe they may not look like it but they carry it what you have you have it was given to you are we together i truly believe that someone tonight i told us the remaining services for this year will be very strongly prophetic services and it will start from tonight just the five minutes or so we have to pray and then i speak over your life when prophecy comes receive it receive it you can reject it but you can receive it do you know I listen to every koinonia message this message now that is being preached it's not Joshua Selman this is the man of God teaching Joshua Selman will listen to the man of God later in the week and when it's time to prophesy I will lift my hands and receive and pray in tongues otherwise I will keep blessing and the anointing that came from the throne through me through me I must also receive it by faith prayer point number one father I am tired of where I am I am tired you are a changer of people's lives lift your voice and begin to pray father I am tired of where I am truly speaking Lord this year will not end like this I've not yet seen any notable testimony in my life and the year is about to end oh God of heaven arise arise those online pray lord the favor you said i will walk in i am yet to see it manifest and it is november the prosperity that you said i will walk in lord i believed you i still believe you so desperate people we want more, more Lord lift your voice and pray we are desperate people we want more, more Lord. we are desperate people we want more, more Lord. we are desperate people gotta be more than this 
press for things and we press in it. Gotta be more. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare over every mountain that stands between me and my result. Hear the word of the Lord. Be crushed into pieces. Lift your voice and pray. Shakatoko sote barata. In the name of Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. I speak over every mountain. Mountain of witchcraft. Mountain of delay. I crush you by the God of heaven. outside pray online pray i decree and declare hear the word of the lord who are down mountain before joshua selman i command you become play Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every promise hanging in the realm of the spirit, I prophesy by the mystery of divine intercession, you must manifest now. Lift your voice and pray. Find expression. I give you a body. My breakthrough. Find expression. My lifting. Find expression. My advancement. Find expression. I give you a body. Manifest in my life. I've seen you in my dreams. I've seen you in my visions. I command you to manifest. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Everything I've lost. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Everything that should not have left me. But was taken away from me. I decree and declare. Return back to my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. Please be serious. Be serious. Pray. Every relationship that should not have left. Every finance that should not have left. Every favor. Every breakthrough. I call you back. Every access. Every platform. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Please lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you, I decree and declare by the anointing of the Spirit of God, I push you to the next level of your life. I push you to the next level of your life. And hear me, I decree 
I don't know what stands your way. I come tonight in the name of Jesus and I crush it into pieces. The same way the Red Sea was divided, I command every obstacle to be divided in the name of Jesus. Hear me? Every physical scenario that must be created in the earth realm to force what is in the spirit to find expression I schedule that event now in the name of Jesus hear me I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God what has tied you and limited you that's how you thought breakthrough will come last year it didn't come I declare to you in enter your rest enter your rest enter your rest enter your rest lift your hands I want to prophesy over your finances there is there is the power to prosper listen there is a grace that helps men prosper in the name of Jesus believe me as I pray this prayer for you by the grace of God who has shown me mercy and grace I prophesy to you beginning from this night favor after favor strange financial favor I speak it to your life I speak it to your destiny I speak it to your life in the name of Jesus Any man sitting on your glory Jacotos Katapatea in the name of Jesus I declare the earth opens up tonight and swallows them the spirit that eats up blessings when it's almost coming to you it comes to others when it's about your turn something cuts you off this is not for everybody but I'm prophesying to someone if your eyes saw it in the spirit I command your hands to hold it if you saw it in your dream I command your hand to hold it if you saw it in your visions I command your hand to hold it hallelujah now listen I pray for everyone here who is a student that, and you are not you have already celebrated graduation but the truth of the matter is that what is in the faculty will not graduate you I stand before my God whom I serve and I decree and declare strange intervention for you now listen if there is anyone here God told you that by December you should have a job until now no job has entered your hands in the name of Jesus the son of the living God wherever your job is from the realm of the spirit I connect it to your life I connect it to your life and if there is anyone sitting there now I overturn I overturn until it gets to your turn listen there are people God has instructed to bless you but they have been disobedient I take sleep on them tonight they must obey God on your behalf in the name of Jesus Christ please hear me I don't know what has not been working in your life I'm prophesying to you by the anointing I decree and declare they say master we have toiled all night some of you you have toiled from January you have submitted the same prayer request miracle service after miracle service it comes to an end now in the name of Jesus it comes to an end now by the anointing of the Spirit give me one minute to speak over your family members I don't know what is plaguing your family members 
that God must step in if not you will still cry again I change that situation now please help them help them shake it to scapariata i change that situation now may the angel of the lord's presence in the name of jesus go to every home and begin to correct things now i command correction 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 If there is anyone here with a health challenge that has refused to go I don't care what it is I stretch my hands to you and I command that the power of God comes upon your body now